underway to get done with the season, and it's crazy to think that these points are that tight. Yeah, absolutely. We're having more fun pound for pound than anybody else. I, I can guarantee that. But we're just about ready to go racing with Formula 4x4 and Classics. In the Formula 4x4 field today, it's Cody Summers in the 406. Randy Scheidel picked up that win yesterday. He's in the 488. In the 499, it's Jacob Anderson. 477 is John Holtz. 424 is Justin Monty. 476 is Andrew Holtz. And that 426 of Dan Boshaw, unofficially, if he takes this green flag and you see him there front and center on that starting line, he will be your points champion in Formula 4x4. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, kudos to him and his team. He had some bad luck, like he said yesterday. But, hey, this is off-road racing. As that yellow board slides across our first race of the day, about to get underway. White for it. There it is. Green flag out. Who's going to get the Forest County Potawatomi turn number one first? Looks like Scheidel has a little bit of an advantage over Boshaw. Yeah, Scheidel showing a lot of speed on these land rush starts this weekend. There it is, the first hole shot around number 10. It's Rowdy Randy Scheidel leading the field down through turn one. Good clean start by our Formula 4x4s. Four we should see our Classics field come off the line very soon. Already Dan Boshaw has ran right to the bottom in the barn turn, taking over the early lead, so... Look at Boshaw already. He has clinched the 2020 points championship. As we look at the classics, they're back underway. Here comes Aaron Condenser in that El Camino in turn number one. Dale Chestnut to the inside, Shane. Yeah, those two guys are your points battle. Conacher needs to beat Chestnut and get a little bit of help, so we'll keep an eye on both of those two drivers. Only eight points separating them, but that would mean that Conacher would have to pick up some bonus points and Chestnut would have to finish fourth out of these four cars. Yeah, absolutely, and it's really tough when the class isn't that big. I mean, you don't really have a big spread out. If a guy has a bad day, he's still finished fifth, sixth, so really, Scheidel got back in front up there in Formula 4x4. Meanwhile, Conacher is going to stretch his lead out over Chestnut. Boy, we talked about Scheidel having a nice hole shot, and this is where his legs in that truck really show the advantage as he's pulling away from Boshaw just a little bit. Yeah, really good speed right now out of Scheidel on this slick track here this morning. Yeah, you can see, see the standing water still a little bit, but the tractor's done a very, very nice job. Yeah, they've been up since about 6 a.m. with wow. machines out on the track. Yeah, of course, that's all volunteer work to all the guys running those machines. Yeah, passionate absolutely. about the sport, they want us to get succeed, so they're putting in the, the long hours. Yeah, trying to make a track for these drivers, and it's still Scheidel in front of Boshaw. Yeah, it'll take a little bit, a couple races to get this back section packed in, but the front section, they did a fine job. Actually, he's talking to my twin brother last night, and he's just like, man, the lights are still on. They're always playing with this track. Ever since we were five, six years old coming here, you watch them, they never give up. They don't care. They don't make it a race facility. Summers. Yeah, he's running in third right now in Formula 4x4. He's showing a lot of consistency this year, but it's like he's just a half step behind Boshaw and Scheidel so far. As it's Conitzer. Look at that lead by Conitzer. Wow. You know, I wonder if Chestnut maybe just kind of preserving the car a little bit, knowing that he can't, uh, he can't let... Conitzer get too far ahead, but if he can stay in front of either Cosiza or Faye Stetsny and finish ahead of either of those guys, he can wrap up his title. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all in the head of the drivers, and I mean, if you're out there, this is the last race of the week, and I don't care if the points or not, I'd want to win. I want to go and break my buddies and everything all winter long and tell them, you know, I won the last one of the year. Boshaw, he's won eight of these things, but China goes really wide. Here comes Boshaw again. We'll find out how much speed Scheidel has now as he tucks in behind Boshaw going down for Cowboy Corner. Scheidel just really needs to calm down. We call him Rowdy Randy Scheidel for a reason. Look at him just trying to drive in oh, on look Boshaw, at that. making a little contact, goes underneath. Door-to-door -door contact, all in good fun there. And how about it, Rowdy Randy Scheidel steals the lead back from Boshaw. It's going to be a drag race down the land rush start into turn one. Here comes Scheidel, he's trying to go to that inside. You see a little bit of smoke on Boshaw. I think that's the fiberglass just making contact with that tire. Oh, oh stuff definitely gone wrong. Yeah. Maybe with Boshaw, he slowed right down. 
Yeah, it looked like Beauchamp was off the pace for a second, then it looked like Randy was off the pace for a moment too, so we'll keep an eye on both of those drivers. Yeah, I don't know, a lot of excess fuel coming out of Beauchamp, I don't know if it's running very clean. Yeah, we heard the, the backfire shook the windows up here in our announcing booth. Yeah, they did a lot of work overnight on that machine, so maybe it's just not running perfectly, but I'm sure Ben and the boys are Really trying whatever they can to keep it going, and there goes Scheidel. He goes yeah. around. Rowdy Randy spins it around in the gravel pit. He's going to have me at risk of losing that spot to Cody Summers there. That would be your battle for second in Formula 4x4. Four four. Dan Bosha now up inside. Looks to be dragging off the rear of that truck. Can't say enough about that kid. He's been putting in a great effort here in 2000. Here in Champ Off Road, and man, you see a lot of excess fuel normally on that machine, but it just seems like it's throwing it out so much more. As oh man, it looks like Summers, Summers having some major issues. He's off our camera. We'll see if we can give a view of him. He's smoking. Yeah, meanwhile, in classics, it's still Chester, or excuse me, Connets are way out front of Chester. As there you see Summers showing some smoke. Looks like he got it back underway. Dan, usually when you lift in and out of that throttle, you'll get that excess fuel to burn out. So I don't know if he's just yeah, but on Brent, and off the gas a lot. I've seen it a couple times when he's accelerating, and I know that's right. extremely unusual to see that come out. And it could be loading We're waiting up, for too. Brent or waiting for Danny Boshaw to come back into turn number one here. You see Summers still off the pace. A lot of steam coming up the side of that truck, so tough break for Cody Summers. Yeah. And race with us all year. Look at this, Brent. Randy Scheidel. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe something in front of us. happened to Boshaw. I don't know. Yeah, Boshaw's, Boshaw's off the track. Off. His day looks to be done. So definitely that flame we were talking about, maybe loading up that carburetor. I don't know. With all that work that they put in last night, just tough, tough break for them. As there we look at Summers, Summers heading across the track. He's headed for pit lane. So they'll check on that 406 Ford Bronco of Summers and see what's up with that one. Boy, could Randy sweep the weekend, maybe? Rowdy Randy trying to put the rest of this class on notice that he can contend for wins as well. Randy Scheidel out front after Boshaw falls out of this big race here at the end of the year. Luckily, he only had to take the green flag if you weren't tuning in earlier with us earlier at Champ Off Road. He just took the green flag, he wins the championship, but I guarantee you, he's my cousin. I know he doesn't want to go out like this in 2020. Yeah, he's a really passionate guy. He likes nothing more than standing on top of that podium. So, like we've said a couple times now, it's a really tough break for him. But that turns the race lead over, and look at that. I mean, Scheidel's in a zip code all by himself right now. Yeah, that Conrad's Auto Salvage 488 gonna head back towards our starting line here in Granite by Cowboy Turn. See the uh, body damage on the driver's side of that truck from the contact with Boshaw. This is round 10, and I don't think he's finished a single round with a, a totally straight body on that 488 truck. No, absolutely not. He really runs it. He, he created his own name. I mean, he's very, very quick. Sometimes he just needs to slow down a little bit to go fast, and we've seen that in round number nine. A lot of guys, we walked through the pits and we talked to some of our drivers. And you know, what was the key? Uh, well, I was only running at about 50, 60% because it was faster, so it makes a lot of sense. You don't want to make mistakes here. Meanwhile, Eric Conacher, that number 640 Shallock trucking machine, he's absolutely putting on a display in classics. Nobody even remotely close to him. About a full straightaway lead on Chestnut right now. But Chestnut, if he finishes where he is now, I mean, that's that's his points championship. And, you know, Dale has a ton of race wins and a handful of championships, and he knows that the, the payoff of winning a championship, it's, it's really important to him. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what you have to do. You just have to think smart. As you see, Randy Schneider still out front. There's Aaron Condenser in that 640 El Camino. Such a cool looking ride coming into that gravel pit. One more time, we should be coming close to that mandatory competition caution. As Connors are just trying to stretch out that lead, but that lead's gonna go away. So honestly, Shane, I think it's gonna get interesting because he probably knows if he can finish right there, he'll win the championship. But what does a guy do? Do you go for the win? I mean, if you have an opportunity, obviously Connors looks way faster. 
but I, I have a feeling he has something up his sleeve. So, I mean, is he just chilling? I think Chestnut's just such a, a calm, calculated veteran that he is perfectly content to stand one step below Conitzer on the podium today, knowing that his name is in the record books as the right. 2020 points champion. Yeah, you look at the overall for him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I totally agree with it. I just, you never know. With drivers nowadays, you never know when it's your last race, when you're going to hang up the helmet and say, hey, I don't want to run no more, especially Dale. I mean, he's been around for a long, long time, probably has more trophies in this class than anyone. Now, on the flip side of that, if we're talking about this race being, you know, round four, you know you'd see everything Dale has trying to get up around Conitzer. We're going to send it down trackside for the first time today to Haley Shanley. Haley, what do you have for us down there? Thanks so much. We have just a tough break for Dan Boshaw. Looks like he possibly had some mechanicals out there, and I don't want to speculate. I don't have official word just yet, but all season long, been talking, talking with so many drivers, and they say that a track like Crandon can be hard on equipment. Why is that? Because you are, it's one of the fastest tracks. You're pushing these trucks side by sides and buggies to the absolute limit, and as the season comes to a finale, a close here at Crandon, the gloves come off. So you really, like you guys have talked about, you can work on these trucks, these vehicles all winter long, but you are pushing it to the absolute limit today. So a tough break for him. Perhaps that damage may just be from running this truck to its limit. Thank you very much, Haley. And there you can see the 426 of Dan Bosha getting pulled off in that anger management truck. And I mean, he's really shown what he can do. No, no offense to that team, nothing that he has to worry about. They showed what they could do and they're gonna go in 2021 with a pretty good feeling. And uh, Brent, not to chime in with too somber of a tone here, but someone else having a rough weekend is my dad. Usually you'd see a guy down in that finish line flag stand there, the great big white beard throwing the checkered flags. He uh, got injured out here setting up for the event on Friday. He is doing extremely well. I know that a lot of people have been asking me and uh, really heartfelt from the bottom of my heart i appreciate all the concern from people my dad is doing extremely well uh, he insisted that i still show up he would not let me miss this event for <laughs> sure anything <he> did. <laughs> and uh, honestly yesterday and today his worst pain is that he's in a hospital bed in marshfield under the care of some great medical professionals and not out here throwing checkered flags so wow. certainly thinking about him but he's doing extremely well and those of you that know my dad well he's in very good spirits he's joking around and just really upset not to be here no, and uh, prayers with you and your family, man. Larry's an awesome man, and I know he's watching today. And we love you, man. Get better, and we can't wait to see you back at the track. He's look at Scheidel already pulling away on that restart. No damn Bosha. Yeah, at this point, Scheidel knows he's on his way to a two-for-two two weekend. And this season on an extremely high note. Like you said, if he can just button up a little bit of that aggressive driving issues that he has that sometimes comes back to bite him. He could really be a force next year. Well, absolutely. Like I said, if he just calmed down a little bit, and he's a good guy. I mean, I've talked to him quite a few different times, and he wants to win. He just loves to be the clown of the class in a good way. He just loves to show his attention, and he's a good talker. He really wants to keep the track going. And all this race series together in that class is not easy. Those trucks are very expensive. Eric Connets are now going to restart this second half of the race. There's Dale Chestnut, your current points leader. 640 El Camino coming into the gravel pit one more time. Such a cool looking car. You, go, you get time go down there and look at the cage, everything. You got an El Camino body on it, but everything around it. The Connets family did a nice job. Good battle a little bit further back there in Formula 4x4. That was Anderson, who we've seen running a limited schedule this year as he's developing his program. He's battling with one of those Holtz Jeeps. That's the 477, I believe, of John Holtz. That'd yeah. be your battle for second in Formula 4x4. Randy Schneider coming in to turn number one. One more time. Trying to open up that lead just a little bit more here in round number 10 for a championship off-road. As we come up to the barn turn, he really better just chill out if he wants to win this one. He was going into that back section by the starting line, Shane. He was just hucking it in there. You don't want to catch a rut and throw this one away. Yeah, Rowdy Randy is one of the, the kind of race car driver where he has one speed and it's, you know, push the pedal to the floor and let's see what happens. Oh, oh, and more bad like luck Summers. for Summers. 
He's been fighting. I, I gotta assume it's an overheating issue, judging by the amount of steam coming out of that truck. A tough break for him. Aaron Connitzer one more time coming into Forest County. Potawatomi turn number one and that car looks very, very dialed. Yeah, Connitzer able to trim that points lead that Chestnut has down to seven points, but that means Connitzer has to finish fourth and unfortunately only four classics cars made the call. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. It's really tough when you have not that many cars in the class for Connitzer. Connors are going through that grab a bit head towards actually Brent uh, fly away. Double checking my math there because it's early in the morning. With that bonus point that Chestnut picked up unofficially, he's clinched the 2020 points championship. And I, I'm sure he knew that coming in that all he had to do was pick up one more point. Right, absolutely. And that's why he was playing it safe as we look back on board with the 488 of Randy Schneidel coming back into Forest County, Pottawatomi, turn number one, and he's opened up a huge, huge gap here at Crandon. And this is our final lap, Brent, so Schneidel on his way to a weekend sweep here at the Forest County, Pottawatomi Brush Run races. Yeah, he's gonna be a happy race car driver as he comes through the barn turn one final time, remember. This is it for 2020 here in the Formula 4x4 division. And Dan Lushow, he's sitting on the sidelines watching, just bummed out. But he is your points champion. Oh, Look Randy, at Scheidel down. still. I My goodness. You. Two corners to go, and Scheidel is up on the bike running all by himself. Yeah, don't throw this one away, Randy. Only a couple turns to go, one to be exact here. A hard right hander going to do it here in 2020, sweeping the weekend after Dan Beauchat was just very, very tough to beat early on. Yeah, how about that? Randy Scheidel takes the win in round nine, comes back in round ten and picks up another one. So now we'll ride along with Aaron Connitzer, that number 640 Morgan Enterprises machine, headed down into the gravel pit. Yeah, a lot of them are pushing right through into that slop, so they really got to learn to get that car rotated early. As Connitzer, he has a big enough lead, though. No worries on his part. He's going to bring it in to the finish line turn one final time, Shane. Coming around Calamity Corner, taking his time. He's got a ton of space behind him. There's the checkered flag. Connitzer takes the win in round number 10. And just a few seconds behind, crossing the line, your unofficial 2020 points champion in the D&D Services Classics, it's Dale Chestnut. How about that, Brent? I'm looking down at Connitzer's car, and there's a, a steady stream of water coming out the top of the radiator. Yeah, absolutely. I caught that on the back of the side of the camera, and I'll tell you, that car is definitely warm, but it made it to the end, and that's all he cares about. He has all off-season to work on that car, see our new points champion, Dale Chestnut in the 613, making his way up by Randy Schneidel. It really is. Love starting out the day like this to have our points champion on the podium, but a strong performance from all three. Starting out for our classics in third, we have Ronald Casiza. Ron, you have been so consistent this year, a great year for you. How proud of you are you of everything that's transpired this year? I'm happy we made it up here the, again today. We had an engine failure last yesterday, so we worked on pretty much all day yesterday to get it going and got out there and still had more problems, but managed to finish and really excited about the season and come back swinging next year. Wow, a testimony to the hard work overnight. Congratulations. Who'd you like to thank? I'd like to thank all my friends and family for coming out and my pit crew for helping me get the motor in and anyone else at Double D e Services um, and all the guys I raced against. Ronald Cassis, our third place finisher here today. And in second, we have Dale Chestnut, your unofficial 2020 points champion for the class, your classics. Woo! Yeah! Dale, I've gotten to talk to you so many times on the podium this year. You've been also very consistent. What does this points championship mean to you? Well, points championship means a lot. Um, yeah, we came back here the last race and we got the ring and we get another points championship. You know, I was kind of out of the truck for a year and then I kind of worked my way back in this year. And I really wanted to come back and get it and I knew it was going to be tough competition with these guys out here. And I 
Nick Bing filled in for me, did a great job early, and I come back, and uh, I probably shouldn't have been in the truck today, but you know, it's Cran, and I really wanted to be in it, so I knew if I stayed in second, I had the points for sure, so I just told my spotter, keep me clean, keep me in second, and we'll let Aaron have it. Aaron's a great driver, deserves everything he gets. Who would you like to thank? Well, I'd like to thank Arturo Tires, Ultra Wheels, JP, BP Fuels, um, Double D Services, AMS Oil, ATD Transmissions, Off-Road Fraternity, everybody else that shows up and helps, and all the great people in the pits, and uh, all the family people we got here that just come out and it's like a big family and everybody kind of helps everybody. It was just a great, wonderful year again. Um, hopefully we'll have a great year next year. Congratulations, Dale Chestnut. Second place today for the Classics and your 2020 champion. And in first, Aaron Swerve Conisser, your winner. Aaron, this truck was absolutely dialed today. Tell me more about that wire-to-wire -wire win. Well, I guess I didn't screw up today. <laughs> kind of felt like I gave one away a little bit yesterday. And, um, it feels really good to be back on top of the box, especially after we struggled here the last couple weeks. And I don't know, it's kind of like feast or famine for me here at Crandon. Um, Got to give a shout out to Dale and his crew. Um, they kept at it. I know we started out kind of on fire and they, uh, at the beginning of the year, I mean, and they just kept at it. And we had a rough weekend here last week and, or last time here at Crandon and um, he he won the points so enough said there congratulations to him on that and uh, I guess I gotta thank my crew and my family and um, my sponsors Schwitty Dairy, Bluer Dairy, um, Grave Transport, Morgan Wood Products, uh, John Barkey Real Estate, um, thank Double D Services as well for sponsoring our class this year. A strong performance, and your winner here in the grand finale, this is Aaron Conitzer. Congratulations. And this is your D&D &D Services Classics. They really are. Justin Monty, our third place finisher today. <laughs> Ending the season on a high note with this podium, how satisfied are you with that performance? Oh, very satisfied. Uh, was in two-wheel drive all weekend and running this mud with the four-wheel drives. It's quite difficult my arms are tired but uh, my crew helped me out my parents uh, helped me out to get here and battle on the track in the mud we didn't have much passing lanes so I couldn't really get around John didn't have anything for him so but I'm happy to be up here and want to thank all my sponsors for helping me out and getting me here and and uh, we'll see you next year Justin Monty congratulations on the podium our third place finisher and John Holtz in second John, that race was a wild one. We saw some calamity out there. Of course, the track pretty tough already this morning. Tell me, what did you have to do to be able to wrangle a second place finish this morning? The track was a lot nicer than it was yesterday. Um, there was a line inside, so it, it made it a lot more fun. Who would you like to thank? Okay, we got to thank uh, Global Fab, Competition Specialist, Knudsen Engineering, and uh, the crew's favorite, Global Fab. My family, hey, we can't do it without them. Thank you. All about family here in the championship off-road. This is John Holtz, your second place finisher. And Rowdy Randy Scheidel, your winner here today with the weekend sweep. Thank you! Woo! Rand yeah. Randy, even with a commanding, comfortable lead, you know one speed, and that is pedal to the metal. You continue to throw down as laps wind down. How excited were you out there? I just... Today was different than yesterday, obviously, with the track conditions. There was only a couple soft spots. I whipped it once, and I'm going, like, all right, me and Danny are going back and forth, back and forth. So I was hoping the whole race would have been like that. So it's like you learn more when you're next to somebody fighting for it. So, And, you know, you just get comfortable with the track, and I'm still learning every track yet. So, But I can do what I can. and learn from past experiences and what to do and what not to do so everything's going good so far so we're fighting a battle that we're trying to get ahead and good to go hope to see you back next year yes <laughs> love it i, I want to thank <laughs> i want to thank everybody for coming out here i uh, we got a little bit of spectator going on here but you know, the more day comes, it's going to pick up. It's going to be awesome out here. So thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks for my sponsors, Conrad's, Ben Pesa, all these people, and uh, Troy, my spotter dude, right there. Yep, you the man, Bob. <laughs>
Woo -hoo! Uh, I got a family at home that I never talk about, but they're always there for me. They back me, and it's like you get in them moments, and this is it. So thanks, everybody at home, for dealing with me. Thanks. <laughs> Closing out the season with back-to-back -back gold medals. This is Rowdy, Rowdy Randy Scheidel, and congratulations to your top three in the Conrad's Auto Salvage Formula 4x4. Back to you guys. Hinton from Elk River, Minnesota is the number 33. Wes Vandevoort's out there in the number 96. Race Visser is number 80. David Kraus is in the 24X. Ella Holcher is out there in the number 40, alongside her cousin Colin Peitel in the number 44. Samuel Lawrence from Thornville, Ohio is in the number nine. Hunter Van Zyl is the number 27. Ava Lawrence is the number 28. She is in second in points, trailing Andy Johnson, who's in the number 13 by two points. That amounts to one track position. Also in the field, Ben Hiding is the number 19. Mason Querio is 55. 21 is Connor Lacoste. 75 is Xavier Mia. 88 is Lane Wender. And 98 is Gavin Plummer. And we are just about ready to get this one underway. Yeah, you'll see Richie Kulov pull off the side of the track at any time. They should get the green flag this time by, and there he goes. And there's the green flag. Aiden Wanasega will take everyone to the barn, turn over that roller jump, and remember, this is a big points chase here this afternoon. Yeah, Ava Lawrence sitting second in points, only two points behind Andy Johnson. Basically what that amounts to is whichever driver finishes ahead of the other will be your champion. Yeah, absolutely. We could have a, a woman or a girl, if you like to call it, champion in Torque Off-Road. The first year for Champ Off-Road, Shane. And it's going to come down to the end. Andy Johnson, he's very, very quick. He had a bad day yesterday. But I guarantee it with this new track condition, he'll work his way up through the field throughout this one. Here comes Ray Visser already. Yeah, Visser on the move. He started on the second row already threatening Wes Vandevoort that number 96 for second place as they come up and over the Polaris jump. That looks like Hinton running in fourth and Ella Holcher in that HBI ride running in fifth place. Vandevoort now going to work on Wanda Sega as they come through Calamity Corner. Yeah, Aiden Wanda Sega just running the nice line. Visser gets pushed out just a little bit wide. He'll have to file in to fourth spot. As you look at Wanda Sega now, he's opening up about a two car length gap. Wanda Sega using that front row start to his advantage as you saw Van Zyl looking to the inside of Ella Holcher. They made some contact. Both drivers able to keep it straightened out, though. Now Van Devoort pulls up to the back bumper of Aiden Wanda Sega. That Richmond Gear 97 is trying to get away, but he's got a lot of company. Now they're in single file going through the barn turn. Such a cool shot by our drone. Here comes Ray Spitzer in that 80. Going to try to run the wide line, try to get a run down this downside. Momentum is so important to these short course carts. They get such a great run off that hillside. Look at Vandevoort taking a peek to the inside of the 97 of Wanda Sega. We have a four-way battle for the lead right now. Yeah, Race Vissery opened the door. No, they're side-by-side oh, side contact. contact. One's over. Tristan Hinton is, ends up on his roof in that number 33. Tough, tough break. That's all it takes, a little contact. The track's definitely dried out, so caught one of those berms with a little bit of clay left on it. As here comes Aiden Wanasega in that Richmond gear number 97, going to try to stay out front. That's a lot of company. Yeah, Vandevoort in that number 96, one of those Platinum Race Chassis cars. He's all over the back bumper right now of Wanasega. Now Ella Holcher has moved up into third as we take a look at Hinton. And hey, how about it, Tristan Hinton? He's not done with this one yet either. He's going to try to get back underway. Yeah, it just shows you how safe these cars are. They're running every safety feature like the big boys. As here we go, battle for the lead. Vandevoort, up. Vandevoort got a great run there on Wanda Sega down the front straight. Look at that pack of cars, Brent. Top six just about running nose to tail as they go through the barn corner. Vanzile still on the inside of Ella Holcher. That's the battle for third place. Yeah, and look at Andy Johnson, our points leader, coming into this one. He's trying to wiggle his way through the field. And Ava Lawrence, Ava right in front. Ava's right in front of Andy Johnson, and that's the points battle. It's only two points. She has to stay in front of Andy Johnson. 
Yeah, and Andy Johnson, he's not going to do anything to harm her truck or take her out. He wants to win this fair and square. They're a good group over there in the Johnson pit. As look at Wanasigi, he has more company. Yeah, Van Zyl yeah, has Van a great Zyl. early run. Worked his way up and around Ella Holcher. Now he's set up to the inside of Wanda Siga. By now, Aiden's got to know that he's there. That's letting Vandevoort stretch his legs a little bit, running out front. Johnson looking to the inside of Lawrence a little bit. Visser got involved with him as well. Vandevoort out front now, just in clean air. You can see the shield on that helmet just all perfectly clear. Here comes Johnson. Johnson trying to work his way up. Yeah, Johnson got around Ava Lawrence, so that would put Johnson back unofficially leading points. We're going to keep an eye on that as well. Look at Vandevoort, though. Get up and go from that kid in the number 96 truck there. Yeah, he's opened up a big, big gap now going underneath the Ponzi banner. Here's Wanasiga and then Van Zyl. Yeah, Van Zyl racing at his hometown track here at Granite International Off-Road Raceway. Wow, look at the run. Van Zyl trying to get a run on the outside from Wanasiga. Going to go the long way around. We'll see if Wanasiga can shut the door. He crosses over. He does a good job. Yeah, nice defense there by Aiden Wanasiga as we've got some trouble down there in the gravel pit. Van Zyl trying to get all over the back door, Wanasiga, and yeah, you're right, Shane. Yep. Visser got bogged down in the mud, but I saw both of the Lawrence cars down there, both of those rival motorsports machines. We're going to have to sort this out a little bit. It's Wanasiga, he still has his hands full with the 27 of Van Zyl, and that looks like hiding involved with another car. Couldn't quite make out the number there. Yeah, the they're stuck down in the gravel pit, so we'll have at least a partial yellow flag situation here. Yeah, still, trying to, uh, still trying to sort out what happened to both Ava Lawrence and Andy Johnson. And looks like they're in fourth and fifth, and Lawrence has gotten back around Johnson. Yeah, Johnson, he's got to really just pay attention. He's got to stay right in front of her, so maybe he made a little bit of a mistake giving that spot away. Here comes Van Zyl now trying to crisscross Wanasega and Wanasega. He's just fast enough to stay ahead of him, just trying to work that car, make it as wide as possible. Van Zyl is throwing everything he has right now at Wanasega. They're going to go side by side again with Van Zyl on the outside. Didn't work for him one lap ago. You know, watch Wanasega. He's trying to make that car as wide as possible. Like I said, yeah, there's Ben hiding now in that race driven players KTM ride. Having some issues coming into one of those turns. So he's back underway, and that's what's so cool. These trucks, they can take a beating. Yeah, Vandevoort having some problems getting around hiding now. That's going to let the uh, second, third place battle close that gap just a little bit. Yeah, Vandevoort, he's going to try to go to the inside here. I don't know if Heidi knows he's back there. He's going to try to clear him on this straightaway. He's going to get door to door with him. And Ben doing a good job getting out of the way to our leaders. Yeah, really good patience there, too, by Vandevoort to wait for the right opportunity. You don't want to force your way around lap traffic and take yourself out of the race. Look at this battle still going on. And my goodness, these two guys, Wanda Siga and Van Zyl, absolute dogfight between those two. That's your battle for second place here in short course card. Yeah, Van Zyl, he gets a good run coming down this downside by the Swedes here in Crandon. And watch, he'll get right on the rear bumper, but Wanasiga seems to be fast enough to hold on to that spot. Yeah, and for his part, Wanasiga right now doing an absolutely tremendous job of playing defense, good, clean defense, just keeping his rear bumper in front of the front bumper of Van Zyl is now Mia. Wow. It's the 75 car. They had to get around Visser's car, who's still stuck down there in the mud. Yeah, they're still trying to get Visser out of there, but look at this. They're going to be side by side again. Van Zyl and Wanasiga in lap traffic. Definitely going to play a factor, Shane. Yeah, Wanasiga is playing that smart. Kind of used Mia as a pick a little bit there as our white flag is out. One more time around here in Crandon, Wisconsin on round number 10 for the short course cards. Vandevoort well out in front, want to sing it. Here comes Van Zyl to the inside. Another great run by Van Zyl. They're going to have more lap traffic to deal with. And Brent, just to keep an eye on the point situation, Ava Lawrence still in front of Johnson, but she has to gain one more spot. If they tie in points, he's got the tiebreaker for more wins. 
And she just went down to the inside of Ella Holcher. She's got Johnson with her. Yeah, if he, So still if she their takes, nose to tail down in the front straight. Well, if she takes him with him, you know, she needs to make, oh! No Looks trouble like there Van for hiding. Zyle. Yeah, Van Zyle, he just had been hiding, should have took him out that way, but he had nowhere to go, and here comes Wanda Sega. Yeah, Van Zyle got a little bit impatient there. We're on the white flag lap. Wanda Sega on the charge. This is your battle for a second, because out front, it's all Vandevoort. He's kept his nose clean and done everything he needs to do to run a clean race. Yeah, he did a very fine job. Vandevoort in that 96 is going to come over that Polaris flyaway. And remember, it's coming right down to the end. These points championships. Andy Johnson, can he hold off Ava Lawrence for this 2020 title? But in the meantime, Vandevoort, he's going to come around one final right-hander and take that win. Checkered flag for Wes Vandevoort now taking a look at that battle. Lawrence still needs to get one more spot. It's the final turn. She's running out of time. Van Zyl holds on for second, Wanda Sega third, Lawrence fourth, but Andy Johnson, Johnson fifth. fifth. So how about this, Brent? Unofficially, they tied. They got the same number of points. So we go to the tiebreaker, that's most wins, and that would be Andy Johnson. So Andy it Johnson It does not be. get closer than that for a points race. They literally have the same number of points. Yeah, that is so crazy to watch in this short course kart class. They are so competitive. You look at Johnson, he finished fifth. He won the championship. Then you have Vandevoort, Van Zyl, Wanasega, and then Ava Lawrence. I mean, they're tough competitors. They come in week in and week out. You've seen them all around the circuit this year doing a wonderful job. And some of these drivers, they're going to keep moving their way up. You're going to see them in the Pro Live Pro 2 class later on. I can guarantee you that, Shane. Man, for how exciting that was. I mean, we saw a out of this world pro four race last night under the lights here but hey for my money that race right there was just as good we had points drama we had some contact we had a car upside down and a tremendous battle up near the front there between wanda sega and van Zyl. yeah absolutely it came down right to the end and that's what we like to see here at champ off road it makes things very very interesting and anytime you have 17 plus cars on the track you're gonna see a lot of action. And then horsepower isn't there in these cars. So these drivers are really learning how to drive. Yeah, pure, pure skill and driving talent was really- They really are. Lots of fist bumps, lots of high fives. Well, you certainly found the speed here today. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank Wendrix Trust, BDS Suspensions, General Tire, Race Driven, and Vision Wheel. Aiden Wanasega, our third place finisher. Congrats, buddy. And Hunter Van Zyl in second. You had some great battles in there, so tell me more about that. What was it like in those battles? Uh, it was pretty hard. All I had to do is uh, stay out of mud and not uh, just yeah, mostly stay out of the mud and try to find where all the dry stuff is, and yeah. You were able to capitalize and found second here today. Congrats. Who'd you like to thank? I'd like to thank Forest County, Potawatomi, um, Doug Hayes, my mom, my dad, my cleaner, um, Yeti's Ice Cream, Clearman's Logging, my cameraman, uh, and many more. Thank you. Hunter Van Zyl taking home that silver medal. Congratulations. Second. And Wes Vandevoort, your winner here today with that shiny gold medal. Wes, you ran such a clean race. How did you manage to get this win today? Um, it was it was pretty tough. It it took me just a little bit to get around Wanda Saga. He was a pretty tough driver, but we were able to bring it home. You were able to bring it home and a very tough driver yourself. Who would you like to thank for the big win? Um, Modern Bill, um, Le Legend Erecting, Barrel, Bay Oral, um, my mom, my dad, and every other sponsor I forgot. Wes Vandevoort, congratulations on the big win, ending the season on a high note. Let's get up for your Muskego Crane Service short course carts, guys. 
Troy Johnson, then it's Trace Moeller in the 296, and Michael Funk in the 207 from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Then it's Antonio and Gleese in the 212, and then Porter and Gleese in the two, what is that, in the 201, then Zachary Rahanowitz, Easton Sleeper, who we were just talking about, from Tomahawk, Wisconsin, then Sam Morcord in that 290, Shane, and I'll tell you, watch, this green flag's about to go, and there it is, we'll see who can get into turn one first, and Sleeper, man, he shoots out of a cannon in that truck. Yeah, really great jump there by Sleeper, Marquardt's a few spots back in the field, Look at that, three wide through Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn one, the Iglesi brothers leaning on each other. It's gonna be Sleeper, and then the 212, that's Antonio Iglesi running in second. Marquardt just made it three wide and gained a couple of spots. He's up to third. Yeah, Iglesi's, they're doing a good job trying to work their way to the front. There's Sleeper, look at the different track conditions that we've seen from yesterday. We've seen a lot of heavy mud. You're gonna see these mod carts get up and go a lot quicker as the gravel pit is definitely starting to shape up very nicely. Antonio Iglesi trying to play spoiler to Easton Sleeper's efforts to pick up another win here at Brandon International. And Marquardt, he's in third right now, just keep an eye on that points, Chase. If he can stay there, he would be in position to take this championship. As long as he finishes third or better, he's got it locked up. Yeah, definitely, and he knows that. He's out there just trying to run as hard as possible. He don't want to do anything stupid especially when you have that points lead. As you look back up front, the 213 of Easton Sleeper just tiptoeing his way through the front stretch, clicking off a lap already. Lacey, that 212 going through the barn turn, and look at that, we talk about the track conditions. It is starting to work its way out about a lane and a half now. They'll keep working with the track. You see them go out with the graders throughout the weekend and just keep making that track as wide as possible. And hopefully, we see a lot of trucks going up on that berm in the gravel pit, one of my favorite sections. Yeah, there's a beautiful race line starting to wear in here, and we'll watch that race line get wider and wider. Look at Sleeper starting to run away now from Iglesi. Both of those Iglesi cars have had some uh, really good runs here over the last three rounds at Crandon. It's gotta be a good feeling to share the podium with your brother, knowing that you're competing against him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's bragging rights, especially, but you want to make sure your team does well and work together is the big part in this. Here comes Marquardt, that 290, trying to work on the inside, and Glazy, Glazy going off the barn chuff one more time. As you look at our running, leading board sleeper, and Glazy, Marquardt, and Glazy in the 201 as well. And then Johnson, Troy Johnson, that is. You watch Andy Johnson run in the kids' cars. You see a local yellow, no harm, no foul. Look Here at we that. go, and Glazy, look at that. Porter and Glazy takes that spot away, so that moves Marquardt back one spot. And unofficially, that would lead to a another tie in points that would be broken by the uh, most wins tiebreaker, so Marquardt, he's gonna have to battle back here on Porter and Glazy, and he does, they make some contact. Marquardt's gotta be careful with that, mixing it up too much with these other drivers. Yeah, absolutely, Shane, you are right. You don't wanna beat on your truck too much or beat on anyone else. You definitely don't wanna get a black flag or a warning in this championship, because if you finish last, we have quite a few trucks in here. If you finish last, you're gonna take a big points dividend as we got this good battle going on. Yeah, Marquardt back where he needs to be now. If he finishes third or better, it doesn't matter where Sleeper finishes, he would lock up the championship. Yeah, Marquardt's gotta be careful. If they make it to halfway as they stand now, Sleeper would pick up two bonus points, and Marquardt would pick up no bonus points. So Boy, we'll keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, absolutely, he's in Sleeper. I can't say enough about that kid. He's come a long way. Ran in the short course cards for many of seasons. Now in mod cart, and it looks like that team has that truck dialed as Marquardt trying to widen out that turn and get that tight exit. I love what he's trying. Yeah, running some good clean lines. He's finally clear of the 201 of Border and Glazy, who has fallen back just a bit in fourth. Marquardt still trying to push ahead here. About a second and a half behind Sleeper. There's Marquardt now, almost two seconds back. 
remember, we have that mandatory competition caution chain at that halfway point. And Sleeper, he's doing what he needs to do. He's running fast. He's picking off laps. He just needs to keep concentrating, watching as the track just keeps developing. As Inglesi comes right across the bottom and really buttons up to the rear now. So you could see a good second half, Shane. Yeah, Inglesi in that 212, he might have just figured out the best line through that gravel pit turn as we're coming to our caution, mandatory caution. We're going to keep an eye on the gravel pit after this restart because I think Inglesi just found an advantage there over Sleeper. We might have a challenge for the lead here. Yeah, absolutely. There's Sleeper still out front and Glazy in the 212. You're right. He came into the gravel pit. He was trying different lines and then he found a really, really quick line on exit and he reeled in Easton Sleeper. Now it shows on our cameras that it's about a half a second, but that all went away. And Sleeper will pick up those two bonus points for leading at halfway. So now that points gap is only six points, which, as I said a little while ago, if Marquardt holds on and stays here in third, they would have an equal number of points and Marquardt would take the championship on that wins tiebreaker. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to go down to our third member of our team. Haley, what do you have for us? In this Fins Fintown Custom Road Siding Mod Cards class, it's all about growth here but in both the cart classes. And one thing I love is hearing those podium conversations. As these kids get to the podium, they're exchanging high fives, fist bumps, talking about the race, so much sportsmanship. And they're go and because of that growth they're experiencing this year, like I said, that sportsmanship is such a good foundation as they move on to the classes beyond. So we'll get more word maybe even later today of some potential drivers moving up to the next class. But talking with Porter and Glazy ahead of this race, he said as far as growth this year, he's been learning so much from his brother Antonio, who currently sits a second in this one. He said that's really helped push him this year. So those Inglazy brothers looking for another strong finish here in the finale. Thank you very much, Haley. And she's right, the Glazy brothers, they're doing a fine job. You look on our screen in the 212 and the 201 running second and fourth. We'll have to see. We're about ready to get back underway. But yeah, Porter in that 201, he can uh, completely ruin Sam Marquardt's points right, chances right. here by just passing him at this point. That would be the gap that Sleeper needs if he can hold on for the win. And I mean, look at that. Each of those Inglazy cars, they both have a shot to ruin a points chance for someone else just by making one clean pass. Well, it looks like we're going to have to fix some rear and front bumpers on the offseason. These guys just keep playing tag out there. Well, like we said, they can lay it all out on the line. Now you've got all winter to work on these cars. Nothing left to do but uh, celebrate your, your wins or lament about your defeats. Sleeper's going to lead the field down into the gravel pit. I'm watching both of these Inglazy cars. Oh, there to play goes spoiler. Glazy. Look at Antonio and Glazy down to the inside again. Here comes Porter and Glazy on the inside of Marquardt. Wow, Porter's trying to ruin the championship, doing what he needs to do to get out to the front. Now they shuffle back a couple spots, and at this point, Easton Sleeper is in control of his own destiny. If he can get back around Antonio and Glazy, that would bring him the points championship. Yeah, Easton, he really needs to just dig deep. He knows he's fast enough, but in Glazy's really, really quick in that gravel pit. You called it right. You said we'll have to watch Both the gravel of those pit. Glazy cars, they've got that gravel pit figured out, so kudos to that team putting in the homework and finding some speed that everybody else apparently missed. Well, then you hope that maybe Todd Sleeper's on the radio with Easton telling him, you know, that's where you had your pocket pick. Try what he did. Try to go in a little bit lower and try to get a good exit as we'll have to see, but he's just not on the back yeah. bumper. And we know Todd wants nothing more than to win a championship. They've worked so hard over the last few years for Easton coming up through short course carts and into mod cart, putting in a ton of time and effort. This is what they're racing for is this championship. If he can get back up and around Antonio and Glazy, it would be his. And Glazy still out in the lead. Here comes Easton Sleeper running about a half a line off coming by what will be our finish line. The green flag still out and almost a second back now, Easton Sleeper. Seeing Glazy coming into that hard left hander in the infield on the short track. And Brent, we have had a development. Look at that, Marquardt has spun around and stalled in the finish line corner. Oh, that is huge on the points championship for Marquardt. Devastating to his points chase. 
The hope to winning that title looks to be going out the window as yeah. Iglesi go back on board up front. Yeah, we got to give Iglesi some love. That was an absolutely flawless pass that he put on Easton Sleeper. But now Sleeper is in control of his points destiny. If he can stay there in second, he'll wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. He just needs to be patient. Don't break anything on that truck. As Iglesi still well out in front, just holding his own. Just trying to carry his speed. He should be coming to the white flag here coming up in two laps. As you see the board on the right side of our screen. As in Glazy, man, you can't textbook. That's all I can call it in the gravel pit. It's really hard to make that pass, not alone make it stick. As yeah, and Sleeper. Antonio and his brother Porter, they both pulled the same move and each gave a spot there. Just a tremendous job by both of those drivers. Just seesaw on that steering wheel. Sleeper goes through as Glazy as well. I mentioned it earlier, Brent. We've seen both of these Glazy cars on the podium at Granite a couple of weeks ago at this weekend. So I'm looking at those guys as real title threats for next year, too. Yeah, absolutely. They're comfortable in their own trucks. They know how to wheel it around here, especially at Granite. And Sleeper is just trying to hold on to that second place spot, secure that points championship here in 2020 in Champ Off Road. Lazy. He should be coming to the white flag this time by. There it is. Meanwhile, Sam Marquardt is still out there on track on the lead lap. So at this point, it's going to take some lousy luck for someone else. That brings out a yellow flag. We'll keep an eye on that as well. But it looks like Sleeper might have snuck in and stolen this points championship away from Marquardt. Yeah, it's just how it all lays out. You race every race as it's your last. And Iglesias doing what he needs to do, running out front, coming over that roller jump into the Polaris gravel pit. And Sleeper just holding his own there in the 213. Gonna walk his way through one more time. One final turn to go, a right-hander for Iglesias. And man, Shane, take it away. How about this run? Beautiful move right off the restart. First time through the gravel pit for Antonio Inglesi, and he will take the win here in round number 10. And no oh, trouble for Porter Inglesi. He spun it around, running in third. Well, Mark Hart, he wants to try to get around one more spot. Maybe it'll help him out a little bit. But oh, look at Zachary Hanowitz going around. Did look like the 201 of Porter Inglesi held on for third there. Yeah, yeah. Able to get straight back out. Excellent day for the Iglesi family, no doubt about it, but how about that? When we came into this weekend, Easton Sleeper was looking way uphill at Sam Marquardt, and everything just fell his way, fell towards Easton Sleeper. He puts together a great weekend. He won yesterday, second today, and he steals that points championship away. Yeah, absolutely, and consistency was huge for Easton Sleeper in 2020 here. And he should be our points champion. He's going to be a happy race car driver. He earned that one. As Inglesi is going to get out of his car as we look at the Forest County Pottawatomie brush run results. They really are. Porter Inglesi, our third place finisher. Porter, you did it. Back to back podiums here alongside your brother at that. Such an exciting high note to end the weekend on. Tell me, how high was the stress level there in Calamity Quarter when you got turned around but kept her going? I was just hoping there was nobody right behind me. I got so lucky there was nobody right behind me. But you had the speed throughout, so how fast was this car feeling today? It felt really fast. The, mu the track was a little muddy. It wasn't as bad as yesterday, but. I felt like it was going pretty good, and if you get too far out, you're in the mud, and if you get too far in, you're in the mud. <laughs> Who would you like to thank for the podium? Um, my mom, my dad, FCR Logging, Jacobson Logging, Zeeb Trucking, Lawson Products, um, k and Hauling, Spread Eagle Fireworks, uh, Rod Dog Custom Rod Holders, Kurt and Kyle Greaves for all the help. My uncle, my grandma and grandpas, uh, and off road logging. Porter and Glazy, our third place finisher. Congratulations.
and your unofficial 2020 champion Easy E Easton Sleeper for Mod Cart. Easton, heading into the weekend, you had some work to do in this points championship. Of course, looking up to that first place position, how good does it feel to have finished on top of the season? Uh, it feels great. Uh, a lot of work this season. Um, motor ran great this year. BNB Power Sports made a killer motor. Um, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so happy. Uh, all my family put all the work. Kirchner, uh, all the Kirchner family, Zach, Riley, Jake, everybody out in the uh, Land Rush, get me in my mood and get off the whole shot. Um, all my sponsors, Mackle Tools, BMB Power Sports, my dad, uh, grandma and grandpa, uh, Off Road Fraternity, VP Racing Fuels, JP, uh, FXR, NGK, Doc, uh, and all my other sponsors. Thank you. Claiming a whole shot and that silver medal today on top of that championship here in Mod Cart. This is Easton Sleeper. And your winner today, taking home that gold medal, Antonio Inglesi. <laughs> Antonio, that pass for the lead you made out there, you absolutely finessed around. So break down that moment for me when you found the lead. Well, the first couple of laps, I wasn't very doing too good in that corner. I was going wide and hitting the mud. And then my dad told me to stay inside. That's where it looked a lot better. So Easton was a little wider, and I was able to sneak right underneath him and get through. And then... I was out front from there. You held on to it. Who would you like to thank for the big win? Um, my mom, my dad, my uncle, um, my grandma and grandpa, my um, FCR, Jacobson Logging, Kurt and Kyle Greaves for all the help this year, um, K&B Hauling and Esca Excavating, um, Spread Eagle Fireworks, Lawson Products, Rod Dog, Custom Rod Holders, RT Welding Supply, and Donald Trump. <laughs> Hats off to you, my friend. Your winner here today for the Finside Custom Road Siding Mod Cart is Antonio Inglesi. Back to you guys. Really fun one all year. We've got some guys, uh, a lot of guys in this class have already finished on the podium or have won races this year. And also see a little bit of drama sometimes. These guys like to mix it up. They like to play a little bit physical from time to time. And We've seen the uh, underside of a few different trucks this year as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see how they come into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. It is going to be amazing. Looks like 11 trucks are going to make the call for this one. Brian Piott in the number 585 starts on the pole. Alongside of him will be Troy Ringelstetter in the 599. TJ Ewart, who has won twice this year, is in the 520. Stan Wood is the 512. Sankowski's in the 537. And you have Travis Peterson, Diesel Shannon, Colin Whitman, Jordan Fellins, Ben Wiersma, and Colt Wiersma also in the field. And we're green flag racing. Here they come into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. You can see already the water. They're going right through that infield section, trying to brush things off. Sinkowski looks to have a good run on the outside. There's Wickman. Yeah, but it's Brian Piott in that 585 truck pulling a hole shot for the second time this weekend. Zinkowski second, Wood is third, Ewart fourth. Stan Wood in that Vapor Escape Chevrolet in third. Piat doing a good job. He had a good run yesterday in run round number nine. That 18 transmission done, Devony truck. Here comes Stan Wood already to the inside of the gravel pit. Yeah, Wood trying to throw it in there and stay underneath Zinkowski. Got a little uh, forward drive there out of that 512 Vape Escape truck, and he is up into second place. Keeping an eye on our points chase, Colin Wickman came in as a 16-point leader over Diesel Shannon. So Wickman just has to finish in the top seven to guarantee a points championship, which would be two in a row for Wickman. But up front, it's the rookie, Brian Piott, holding off the rest of this field here at Stock Truck. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's in a good truck. John Demney front multiple races in that machine. Here comes Stan Wood. Wood watch for the cross back. He's going to try to go underneath right here. Just like we talked about yesterday, Brent, we've seen Stan Wood have some really tremendous runs this year, but sometimes he can't get out of his own way and his mistakes come back to haunt him a little too much. Zankowski's there. Looks like Ewart having a really strong run early on as well. Stan Wood really putting the pressure on Piot. 
Trying to rotate a little bit earlier. That 585 looking very, very smooth through Cowboy Turn. Zinkowski got a little bit crossed up. That's going to move Ewart up into that top three. Here comes the run by Wood as they come for turn number one. They're side by side. Wood's on the inside. We'll see how it shakes out. Stan Wood takes over the race lead. Piot back down to second. You can see a little bit of rough surface there as they go through turn one. Good battle a little bit further back as well with Sankowski and Ewart duking it out. Stan Wood, that Vapus Game Chevrolet out front now in that 512. You can see the track really nicely starting to come together heading towards the gravel pit. Yeah, trying to charge up the inside of Wood. He wants that spot back as they go through the Polaris gravel pit. Yeah, Piat trying to get a run, like he said. Gonna stay a little bit wider. Stan Wood running about the middle section here. Gonna tiptoe his way on that inside. The green flag still out this time by. Yeah, one lap in the books, and Stan Wood is definitely the man to beat right now in stock truck. It's Wood, Piat, Ewart, Zankowski, and Peterson, your top five. Travis Peterson's been so close to the top of the podium so many times this year, Brent. Every single race this year, he's finished second through fifth place. I know, unbelievable. He's due for a win. We've been waiting for that 555 to get up on top of the box. It's Stan Wood going by our camera. There's Zankowski, that 537, trying to work. And look at that. Peterson, it looks like Peterson, maybe his top five fell down. It's right in front, almost in, almost in front of his face. Yeah, I see that, Brent. He's got an obstructed view there, and he's got Shannick right behind him. Piot still holding off Ewart as they come down into turn number one. That's still the battle for second out there on the race course. Stan Wood starting to run away just a little bit here. It's Wood, Piat, Ewart, Sinkowski, and Peterson. Peterson really has his hands full right now, trying to drive basically blind. He's got part of his body falling down in front of his uh, view, obstructing his vision there. Yeah, that would be really, really tough. Sinkowski right there in that 537. Here comes Ewer in that 520 trying to work on Piat, that Don Demony ride. Look at Piat goes a little wide. Ewer as well. Here comes Sikowski. Sikowski with a perfect move to the inside of Ewer. He'll steal that third place spot away. Sikowski and Ewer each with two wins on the season. Piat doing a good job sitting on that bottom, going into that loose up now, maybe opening up that door for Sikowski. Yeah, Sikowski just wasn't quite close enough to make the move there in Calamity Corner. But at this point, Piat really starting to feel the pressure from Sikowski. Yeah, absolutely, Sikowski. Maybe his tires are set up for a little bit more dry surface as his track starts to brush off. He's doing a good job. Trying to run that inside again, gets a little bit over rotated. There goes Stan Wood, that Babe Escape Chevrolet still out front. Yes, yeah, Sikowski over rotated in the Argonne corner. Ewart's going to be back up into third place. So it's Wood, Piat, Sikowski, Ewart, Peterson in the top five. Here comes Ewart, he, oh, he gets on the binders. Yeah, Ewart putting a fender there on Piat to slow both of those guys down. Sikowski is still right there with them. They're nose to tail down the steel and starting line straight away. See how this one shakes out. Sikowski setting up to the outside of Ewart. They're going to be side by side on entry at turn one. Well, he's going to try to look take at that two. Run. Look at that run by Sikowski trying to get a two for one deal here. Yeah, Sikowski trying to go the long way around. He'll be on the inside after these rollers, but it looks like Piat might have settled down, went to the bottom. As they come through the barn turn in such a cool shot yeah, by look at that. Own, a little rub tap. Sikowski putting all kinds of pressure on Piat. There's the run by Sikowski. He's got second place over Piat as they come down into the gravel pit. Piat can hold the inside line though. Sikowski pushed out wide. Yeah, Swapping Sinkowski. positions back and forth. 
Zinkowski had the spot. He had a great run, just pushed a little bit too far into that corner. Yeah, now he takes that spot again back. We'll see if he can hold it together. That 537 as our mandatory competition caution will be coming out this time by you are not going anywhere. So the second half's really going to start to heat up. And speaking of heating up, look at the back of Ewart. Maybe some issues. Yeah, ewart has been showing some uh, smoke or steam now for about maybe a lap and a half that I've noticed it. As you look back behind Ewart, Wickman running in fifth place. He came into this with a 16-point lead, so he's doing what he needs to do as I'm not sure where Diesel Shannick is. Shannick is actually in sixth as he crosses the line. Peterson finally got rid of that visor that was obstructing his view, so we'll see if we uh, see Peterson make a push to the front here in the second half as well, now that he can see where he's going. Yeah, absolutely, that's tough. He couldn't see, like you said, up front, and that makes it really, really challenging and dangerous, if you ask me, so they got that piece off. He'll get yeah, back still, underway. See it there, still hanging off the right oh, side of that triple off. five. It's still there. Well, the, the part that needed to fall off is at least out of his way, but we're gonna go track side real quickly here to Haley Shanley. Haley, what's going on down there? Well, Stan Wood, our leader, seems to be, he's turning around some tough luck for yesterday. If you remember, he had a flat tire that was just peeling off of the hub. So he's out front right now, seems to be turning things around, but anything can happen just here at the halfway point. Yeah, thanks Haley for that update. A few of these drivers dealing with some uh, issues out on the track. They're trying to persevere as much as they're trying to compete with one another. We were talking about that visor that had fallen down on Travis Peterson's truck. It's actually hanging off the right side of the truck. Yeah, and I just got done telling you, I mean, if I was Peterson on this caution, I'd have went up alongside another driver like, hey, can you rip this off for me? I don't want this to cut a tire or do anything to cut me out of this one as we're gonna come back. To that restart of the green flag once again. It's gonna be Wood in that FAPE Escape Chevrolet. Can he hold it on here in round number 10? Then it's Zinkowski, Piat, Ewart, Whitman, your top five. Back underway here in round number 10. Looks like a good clean restart for this whole field. Zinkowski in those uh, the second part of that first half of this race showed a lot of speed and put together some great runs. We'll see if he has anything for Stan Wood. Yeah, he looks to be fast enough, so we'll have to wait and see going in that gravel pit. There you see that visor hanging off the side of Peterson's truck as well. Both of our top two pushed a little bit out into the soft stuff as we got a pass for third, it looks like. Ewart got around Piot. Yeah, you are now, maybe he can hunt down our top two. You were right, he was probably the only one in that 520 to come through the gravel pit very, very clean and on the right track. As here comes Zinkowski trying to work his way on the bottom, as you can see, those little braking bumps going through Calamity Corner. Now Zinkowski falling back just a little bit. He's gotta be careful because Ewart is still fairly close behind him. Sikowski shows so much speed is basically from turn two up by the barn all the way down into the gravel pit. Uh oh, oh big trouble for Sikowski. Sikowski saw definitely yeah, broke way out of control of there. Truck. Finally able to gather it back up, but that's going to move Piot back up a spot. Peterson's there as well. Yeah, Peterson, if you can't see Peterson, he has that visor hanging off the left side on your screen as Piot now moving back. He'll be in the third spot. There's Peterson in that 555 as we look at Stan Wood. That famous game Chevrolet heading back towards Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one, one more time. Yeah, all that contact and chaos moved Ewart up into second place as well as they head for turn one. So it's Wood, Ewart with still that steam pouring out the back of that truck. Yeah, and then definitely. it's Beyond, Peterson, Sikowski, Shannon, Wickman. I think all those guys I just mentioned have finished on the podium this year, Brent. What a competitive class this has been. Yeah, absolutely. It's so competitive. They run a restrictor plate. It's really, really even in this class. You really have to drive these trucks. I spent quite a few years in this class, and it's so fun because you can't afford to make any kind of mistake. As you watch Wood, speaking of mistake, he went right in the slot, giving that lead over to T.J. Ewart. Ewart trying to pick up his third win here in the 2020 season. 
He'll be in control this time. Should be two laps remaining in Launderville Steel Stock Truck. You can see that hole, those couple holes we saw developing last night. Still there down on the inside of Calamity Corner. And Ewart, he has outdueled everyone else in the class, but now he's got to battle this overheating issue that he apparently has. Yeah, absolutely. We've been watching. And Baby's hitting the rear of that truck. He definitely showing a lot of smoke. Here comes Stan Wood. It's not over yet. Stan just really needs to keep it together. He's shown that he could reel in just about anyone in this class. Yeah, and I hate to keep talking about Stan Wood making mistakes because he is an extremely fast, talented driver. But again, here he had the lead, just made one mistake, and that's all the difference so far. Oh, big trouble oh, for Stan Wood. Man. That's definitely smoke, not steam pouring out of that truck. So looks like the oil temp's getting a little bit too high on that 512. Yeah, absolutely, Stan Wood. It doesn't look like he's going to make it many more laps here around in round number 10. Tough, tough break for the Babescape Chevrolet. Definitely up in smoke. Oh, fire There's some underneath fire. that get truck. Get out of there. Peterson and Sikowski able to get by cleanly. Oh, he's seen some smoke, and then there's just a big blaze, so definitely something came apart. That engine is probably done. Back out front, Ewart now about three-quarters of a straightaway lead over the rest of the field. His truck looking a little worse for wear, too. He's missing his bed sides. His door panel is about to fall off. Yeah, the roof don't look to be intact too much longer. All that stuff's just extra weight anyways. You're faster without all of it. Yeah, absolutely. We were saying in the night race last night, you know, you might as well just put a couple of six caps on it. Get all that weight off the rear of your truck or your car as you are now coming over the Blair's flyaway jump one more time. Going to come into this hard right-hander and calamity turn. Brent, I got word from our extra set of eyes up here that uh, Stan Wood is doing all right. The, uh, they got the fire under control real quickly, so that's great to hear that Stan Wood is going to be okay there. Like you said, the motor in that truck, well, probably not so much. No, this is round 10 as we look at the white flag coming out. That time by T.J. Ewart. Going to be well out in front. Now Travis Peterson and Zinkowski are going to do battle for second and third. As you look at T.J., man, the truck's just been really, really fast here in round number 10 at Champaw Road. Again, if you're watching, this is stock truck. Here at the Forest County Pottawatomie Brush Run Races, I am Brent Smith alongside of me. Shane Stensney, Haley Shanley down on track side, giving you all the information. A lot more racing yet to come as Peterson working his way in the Cowboy yeah. Corner. Look at all the damage on Peterson's Triple Five truck there, the Cal's Chop Shop truck. A ton of damage for him as well. Sikowski's got his hands full with Shannick. Getting it all sorted out for you. Zinkowski, now Shannick out back of your screen, but Ewart is yeah, we saw that, it off. We saw that smoke or steam out of Ewart earlier. Whatever that problem is, it's either gone away or about to get way worse because sometimes when that smoke or steam stops, that means everything's about to let go, but he's only got a couple corners left and he's in control of this one. There's no pressure on him from behind. No, absolutely not. He's just going to run his own line, go through the gravel pit one final time. Going to carry his speed as far as possible as he can. There's the 520. A good look by our drone coverage here. Coming in to the calamity corner. This is it. Round number 10 in stock truck. The win after going through a couple braking bumps is going to go to TJ Ewart. Another good finish for the Platinum Race chassis team. Taking home another win here in round number 10. All kinds of mayhem at the line. Look at this. Contact are side by side. Sinkowski's going to be second. And then Peterson or Shannick third. It's anyone's guess right now. Looking at our uh, unofficial electronic scoring and timing, and you got to be kidding me. That would be one one thousandth of a second difference that Shannick beat Peterson to the finish line. Yeah, that is so close. So Peterson, I don't know, maybe he snubbed the motor when he made that contact in Zinkowski, but Zinkowski will take another yeah, look at gotta, this one. We got to see this one more time. So Peterson pushed a little bit wide. Oh, Zinkowski, he had the spot. They just got hooked together. Yeah, I think Zinkowski was a little too aggressive, and then at the line, my goodness. Oh. 
What a finish. Tough they, break for Travis Peterson as they, he didn't make the top three. Yeah, they're both coming down there while we get this sorted out. Uh, how great the view must be down in that flag tower down there for Johnny and Carl flag in this race. They got to see it firsthand front row seats, but Ewart is the man of the hour, picks up his third win ever in stock truck. Never disappoints, that is for sure. Our third place finisher, Diesel Shanick. Diesel won one thousandth of a second, the margin. Take me through Calamity Corner, that final lap. Well, first off, I, when I took off on the land rush, it just quit on me and everybody took off. Well, I knew I had to work on it, catch up. Then I went around the 180 back there and it quit on me again. Just luck of trying to drive hard and get up back up to the front. And I seen uh, Sinkowski and Peterson battling and I'm like, oh, they might take each other out. And I snuck in there at the last second, but it worked. So <laughs> um, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Weiser Graphics, uh, Bill's Auto Repair, Big Iron, Cold Iron, um, Napa of Wapaka, everybody that helps us out, Legacy Seed, Ams Oil, everybody that helps out, thanks for a great year. We, we'll be back next year. He's a wheel man, Diesel Shanick, fighting through adversity in this one for our third place. And in second, Eric Senkowski. Eric, you were off the pace a little bit on that back stretch, it looked like at one point. What did you need to do to fight back and garner the second place? Oh, Jan, just uh, hit all our marks and just keep telling myself we can do it, we can do it, and we uh, we did it, and I'm um, super jacked to be here. We were, had some issues last night and yesterday, so super happy to be here, and like, I really want to apologize for you and getting into him. I really never meant to do that, man, I, and I hope you mean, and I hope he knows that, so I'm really sorry. Who would you like to thank for the podium? Uh, man, I got to thank uh, Point Out Ironworks, OCD Graphics, uh, Holters Motorsports, uh, Lunderville Steel, uh, Rod End, All Star, um, everybody, man, this is awesome. Thank you. Eric Sankowski in second here today. And your winner, TJ Ewart. <laughs> TJ, there was mayhem. Panels were coming off the truck. The truck was steaming at one point, but you did it. You're up here on the top step. How does it feel? Uh, it feels awesome. Uh, it was a battle out there. I, you, if you got out of the groove, you're going back to at least five truck like, from anyone. Um, yeah, it was just it was a good time, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who would you like to thank for the win? What's that? Oh, I want to thank my whole crew. They stayed with me the whole year. And um, uh, all my sponsors, Legend or Acting, Modern Build, Iser N, Roscoe Meads, Greasebach Con Construction, um, uh, Andy Shock, Splat and Race Chassis, uh, my fiance Janelle, she couldn't make this weekend, but uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> TJ Ewart, congratulations on the big win here at Launderville Steel Stock Truck. Keeping things interesting as the engines are starting to rev up. There is Faye in the tower. Watch as he slides that red sign over and it'll become yellow. And any time between one and three, maybe five seconds, he can throw that flag at about three now. Watch, at yeah, about five seconds, he waited. It's really, really hard to judge when we talked about that earlier. Yeah, it was, it was about five seconds, but if you're sitting on the line, it feels like <laughs> about five minutes that you're waiting to see that arm go up. Look at that huge puddle down the front straight. Stingle just splashed on through it. How about it, Sean Springstro? He's doing it the right way. Got the number plate on top and everything. He's got the early race lead. Sean Springstro not wasting any time. Coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one out front. We'll have to see. One looks like one of the Schultz, yeah. Excuse me, that's the 1129 of Connor Schultz running in second place there. Trying to take home a race win as well as the extra cash kicked in by Mikey and the rest of the buggy dorks along with us here. Yeah, Great Connor battle Schultz. Run early on. Yeah, Connor Schultz is up on the podium yesterday along with his twin brother Colin. Yeah, they've been having a phenomenal year. It's been unbelievable for the Schultz. They're 
really well put together race car drivers. You see the track, we've groomed it a little bit more. Those ruts and that, they're still there. They're starting to pound in. Well, if we're talking about old school off-road racing, I mean, a rough surface, I, I always chuckle a little bit when I hear a driver complain about a rough track because they're all on the same track, so they all have to deal with the exact same challenges. Schultz now coming through Argonne turn, going to head back. We'll put will be our starting line throughout today's action. Springstrom going a little wide, letting it fade out, trying to get a run on this back section. Here comes Schultz. We'll see if Connor can get the job done here at Cowboy Turn. Nose to tail racing throughout this field early on in the 1600 light buggy race. Springstrom, Schultz trying to make out who that third car is. That might be Shillman in that 116 car running in third. That's a great start for him. And it is great start early on for Shillman, a rookie in the class. Yeah, you see Billy Booth in that 151 now making his way up and Stingle as well. Gonna try to go through those rollers as quick as possible. Now Springstrow heading back to Forest County. Pottawatomie turn number one. Schultz about two car lengths back now. Great battle for the lead as they come through Forest County. Pottawatomie turn number one headed for the barn turn. Springstrow was the 2019 world champion in this class, finished on the podium yesterday as well. There is Billy Booth trying to work his way up to the field. Remember, that's a red plate on that machine. That means he won the 2019 championship. Here comes Booth. Booth going to go to the outside. Look at that. Look at those wheels. They're interlocked almost. You see Billy Booth's left, left, or the left front tire. It was in between. The, run, the right, left, and front tire of the other car, so it's crazy how they just go back and forth. Yeah, a lot of trust between these drivers. Shillman doing a heck of a job right now running up front. Back out front, though, Connor Schultz in control, trying to go two for two this weekend. Holding off Springstrode. Like we touched on yesterday, we've seen these guys play a little physical at times, too, and some drama spilled over beyond the racetrack. So, two, two drivers who, uh, while they do have mutual respect, really not big fans of one another. No, absolutely not. We've seen a lot of camaraderie going back and forth, and some upset fans, and some upset pick crew members. But that's what's going to happen here. Everyone wants to win as we watch Stingle come through. And we talk about these tires and wheels getting intertwined with one another. This is open wheel racing. There's no fenders on these cars, so you really have to be patient. You have to be careful. Like your spring stroke, you're trying to hunt Schultz back down, but you can't make that contact because you can scrub off a lot of time. Battle for the race lead coming once again into turn number one. They're about a car length apart. Springstrow's got some branded magic working over the last couple of years. He always performs really well here. Springstrow all over the back bumper. Yeah, he's got a good run down the front straight. Closing that gap to about a half a car leg. We'll see, how, we'll see how early Springstrow wants to turn up the aggressiveness here on Connor Schultz. Yeah, remember we have that mandatory competition caution at the halfway point. So Springstrow, he really doesn't need to force anything. He just needs to run his pace. Make sure Schultz don't get away and just learn from him. I know I got past these saying, but this car could get better as the race goes on. We'll keep an eye on them as they complete the second lap here as they go through Calamity Corner. Schultz in that number 11, 29 car showing the way around. Four laps to go that time by. Billy Booth has gotten up into third, by the way, Brent. He came in trailing Mark Ward by four points. And as of right now, he's got two track positions, which would make up six, or excuse me, three track positions on Mark Ward, which would be a six-point difference, which would handle the championship over to Booth. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, we'll have to see how things pan out. If they pan out right, Billy Booth can keep that red plate for another season as here comes Stingle. Now here comes Marquardt on the charge. And now the crazy thing about this too, Brent, is the tiebreaker being most wins on the season. They've each got one, so if they tie in points, I have no I don't idea know what where they go to next. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you have to do. Maybe their worst finish might cost them. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but right now back up front, coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Connor Schultz, 
Greenstro, Booth, Stingle, still your top four, but these two out front, man, they're really starting to check out on the field. Yeah, really the best of the best at Light Buggy finding their way to the front here. Springstro had an up and down year. He was basically out of points contention after the first couple of weekends. But trying to finish on a high note. I know Mike and the rest of the guys back in the pit know that he can run up front with the best of the best. He's showing it right now as he's right on Colin Schultz or Connor Schultz, excuse me, his back bumper. Yeah, look, look at this. Springstro, he's going to try to go side by side. Can he get there? No, he's just going to have to tuck behind and draft it. They are just inches apart right now as they head for Calamity Corner. Let's see how aggressive Springstro wants to be here. Schultz moves over, takes away the inside line. Both those drivers just bouncing through those holes that are developing. And we are at our mid-race competition. Yellow, we got a good one brewing here in Light Buggy, Brent. Absolutely. These top two are very, very fast, but it's going to re-rack, re-stack everyone. Taking a look a little bit further back. Billy Booth was still third at the break. Stingle fourth. Shillman with a really strong run in fifth. Delory sixth. And where did Marquardt go? Yeah, I don't see Marquardt anywhere. We'll have to keep an eye and see. That's going to be a tough break on his part. Oh, Marquardt. Jolt, Spring Show, Booth, your top three as we head into that mandatory competition caution. Ricky Kuloff, Richie Kuloff is going to re-rack this whole field. And there it is. We were just talking about yeah, it. There's Marquardt. Marquardt. Wow, what a disaster. He came in with a four-point lead. Tyson Marquardt did over Billy Booth. Now he's parked and his day is done in a field this big. I mean, absolutely devastating. Yeah, his championship hopes have just gone out the window. He's up against that retaining wall. And between him and Booth, they were the only two that even mathematically had a chance at a points championship. So by virtue of staying on track, Billy Booth is going to be your points champion unofficially. But we will go down trackside now to Haley Shanley. Haley, what do you have for us? Yeah, Billy Booth, like you mentioned, unofficially our points championship, but take a look at this top seven. All of these drivers have been so consistent this year, so many, numerous podiums amongst that top seven there, but let's take a look at the dirt down here so far. As you can tell, if you're here on site, you know we're not dealing with sunshine today. There's a little bit of breeze, but a lot of moisture hanging in this air, so this track is not drying out as fast as it normally would if we had a little bit more sunshine, less humidity, so she's definitely retaining her moisture there, but as the laps wind down here, getting more laps on the day this surface she's racy that's for sure yeah thanks Haley and one thing to consider is that this clay surface it does need some moisture in it to have maximum grip and right now the uh, race line is widening out like we've talked about yesterday and through this morning and it's becoming a very competitive track and very fast yeah absolutely and you're gonna see it keep getting better and better it stinks that the sun isn't out but things will get better, I promise you that. After this one, we have Pro 2 already coming up early on today, because remember, we have that Community Cup, the 27th annual, at the end of today. But first, we have to finish up this 1600 light buggy. Yeah, things we got are gonna a, get even. We got a long way to go. Doing a Delaware restart, leader gets the front row by himself, and then everybody else stacks up two by two behind. And this could be a lot of shuffling going on on this restart. Connor Schultz in control of the field. Springstro with a good jump as well. Stays right in second place. Stingle is now up to third. Yeah, look at Stingle. He's stuck inside that third place spot. Billy Booth now goes to fourth. Yeah, Delory up to fifth. That's a great run for Delory. Yeah, Pete Delory, what a run. A fifth place finish would be the uh, best finish of Pete's career. So maybe a good late season charge by Delory as he makes some contact there with the 177 of Colin Schultz. Never easy to go through that gravel pit and not make contact when you have 20 plus cars. Oh man. Spencer Janis having some problems down there. Looks like he got pushed out into the mud. Yeah, this class so evenly matched. And I was talking to Pete Delory on Thursday night. And he said, what's so great about light buggy is it doesn't matter if you're in 26th place or in fourth place, you're constantly racing with someone. You're constantly battling for position. Yeah, and that's what's so cool about all these cars in the class. You can be in tens, you can be in first. It's still fun out there. I always like to call them an overpowered go-kart as we look at Springstro. 
Climbing the back hill, trying to defend off a couple of heavy hitters. Yeah, Connor Schultz is starting to run away with this one, but I do not envy Springstro one bit right now, trying to hold off both Greg Stingle and Billy Booth as they go into Cowboy Corner. Yeah, the track really starting to wind down nicely as here comes Stingle. Stingle makes a little contact with Springstro, and it costs him that little bit of contact. You see that momentum we talk about, it goes away, so it's giving Booth a chance to button right back up. Yeah, they'll be nose to tail, second, third, and fourth as they come into turn one. It's still Connor Schultz out front. Comfortably leading now by about 10 car lengths and Springs throw Stingle and Booth and you can throw a blanket over those guys, Brent. Yeah, you definitely could. They are doing some great battle coming over the barn jump. Great camera shot, that drone going just over the Ponzi banner as they come by the suites here in Cranon. There is the 117 of Springs throw and Stingle in the 172. They dive down to that hard left-hand corner at the far northeast corner of this race course. No change in running position there between Stingle and Springstro. No, it looks like Stingle might be a little faster in some areas, but Springstro has just been really, really quick in his marks. Going through there is really, really rough, especially on these 1600 light buggies. They don't have much suspension at all. Springstro does a really great job of walking that fine line between his aggressive driving going non-stop, but also remaining in complete control. He's a really tough driver to get around. Yeah, absolutely, and you can't say he's blocking anyone. He's just running the fast race line. If you look at the Forest County Pottawatomie turn number one, here's some drivers farther back. Yeah, everybody's spreading out a little bit now. Delory's still running up there at the top five, I believe. Well, Schultz is out there, but I mean, he's within reaching distance of Springstro. Springstro can just put a couple laps together. He showed a lot of speed early. We'll have to see if Sean can really dial it in because the laps are definitely starting to wind down here. Yeah, about one and a half laps left. That's about three la or three miles, excuse me, of racetrack. So Springstro definitely up against the clock as well as up against the rest of this talented field here at Light Buggy. Everybody kind of settled in now at this point. Maybe Springstro's is going to hang back just for a moment, collect himself as he got crossed up a little bit there. Yeah, that's scary looking at one of those K-rails there on the outside. And then you look at that banner barrier. You don't want to get crossed up right there. That can be very, very costly. And he did lose a little bit of ground to our leader. Hey, just as a completely irrelevant sidebar here, our top three are, are all running those roof-mounted number plates. So showing for, like I said, the old school buggy dorks out there in the field. Yeah, absolutely awesome for Mike Bannon to get things going here in Life Buggy. He was a multi-time champion, very, very quick in the class. He knew everything about it. Now he's building cars for it. Yeah, he's got a yeah, flying Dutchman chassis running out front, taking the white flag. That's Connor Schultz. From down in the Fox Valley, flying the colors for Flying Dutchman off-road. We'll see his brother Chad Ray from later on today in the roll light as well. Just hanging it out, out front, doing what he needs to do in that 129. Schultz, Springstro, Stingo, Booth, and Lemke, your top five. Good run for the 109 on Lemke. We haven't really talked much about him this year, but solid finish here if he can hold on to that, block, that spot. Yeah, Todd and Jaden came out, ran a partial schedule. That's Jaden driving the car today. And We've seen that both of those guys finish on the podium at times in this class as well. Certainly love to have those guys come back full time next year and mix it up with the rest of these super fast guys in the class. Yeah, I always love calling this class. There's always action like you talk to the drivers and they tell you it's fun no matter where you're at. But it's so cool to call. It keeps things interesting. You never know who's going to win and keep those cars together. And Schultz will come into turn one one final time going through the barn turn. Yeah, Springstro really putting it down. There's a big hole developing down there on that first jump on the front straight. I just watched Springstro. That's why he keeps getting crossed up. It's right in the race line, but they're landing and bouncing out of that hole. Yeah, it's really tough. In round nine, we've seen a lot of rain. We've seen steady rain, and then they had to work with the track. So it's really tough to get it all back in the right shape. It's going to take some races. And definitely having those Pro 2s come out is really going to pack things in and maybe throw off the rest of this new stuff for the rest of the sportsman divisions throughout this round number 10. But not 
taking any chances today, just making sure he was up front. The 129, Colin Schultz, Connor Schultz, gonna take your win. Brinstrow with another second place finish this weekend, so a good finish to his season. I believe we saw Greg Stigl, the KG veteran, across the line in third. Billy Booth finishes fourth. Of course, we are getting accustomed to seeing him up on the podium, but unofficially, he is your 2020 Light Buggy Points Champion going back to back there. So, big shout out to Greg and Billy and the rest of the team back there. Those guys, like we say about a lot of the teams here, they're so dedicated, work so hard, constantly improving the program, doing their homework. Finally, all paid off. Yeah, definitely. It's not an easy class to win in, especially when you throw 28 plus buggies in this field week in and week out. They're going to bring them over to the podium and they'll be talking to Haley Shanley. And we'll have to see what they have to say. This is the Forest County Potawatomi Brush Run race is round number 10. They really are. This is such a stacked class. It's been tough all year long. Greg Single back on the box today in third. You know, like I said, it's been tough all year in this class. So many cars, so much talent. So how gratifying is it to be back on the box here today for the finale? Well, it's always great to be up on the box. I mean, anytime you can podium against all these guys, I believe we had 30, 30 plus cars again today. The weather's been a major factor. I mean, these guys got this track coming around and later in the day, this track is gonna be perfect for like the cup race and everything else. I mean, our race, it was a good start. The track is really good. These guys, like I said, have been working all morning on it. Um, we got to thank more uh, Champ Off-Road, first year on. They've been great to work with. Uh, Moore's got everything going. Crandon, they've been came, stepped up to give us this last race, even though it got canceled back in June. So it's just great to be back up here and racing with these guys. And some cars are getting sold, some are getting bought. So we want to do people again next year. So um, I got to thank my sponsors, uh, Cooter's Pickled Eggs, Kurt Services, JJ or Maloney's, Country Bar, BFG, Ben Small Engine, e s Port Walls, and anybody else I forgot. Thank you. Greg Stingle taking home that bronze medal today here for the finale. And Sean Springstrow in second. Making gains on yesterday's performance so today, you are not letting anyone run away with it. So tell me more about this performance. Uh, I mean, I came out of the whole shot in first, so I mean, I was pretty pumped on that. But then Connor got around me, and I just, I have nothing for him this weekend. He is just that fast. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Van Zeeland's Auto Care, PDI, uh, Skin and Bones Taxidermy, Wentz Trackside. Uh, Seward Speed Shop, Clank Equipment, my mom and dad, and my girlfriend, and everyone that helps me, and anyone else I forgot. Thank you. A great weekend for Sean Springstrow in second. And Connor Schultz, your winner here today. Connor, back to back wins for you. Tell me, what was it taking to stay so consistent out there and maintain that consistent pace over the rest of the field? Well, first off, I like to say I love these rough tracks. They really suit my driving style. I know where to put the car, and I was lucky to capitalize on a mistake by Sean, but then he ran a good race after that, too, so good job to him. And yeah. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank Mikey Vandenhobo for putting on the rooftop number plate for a Throwback Sunday. Um, that's nice to do that. Hopefully we can do that again in the future. And I'd like to thank my whole family, my brother Chad Rayford, Taylor Roloff, my teammate, my brother. I don't know where they finished, but hopefully they did good. And yeah. Connor Schultz, your winner here in the All-Star Performance 1600 Light Buggy. Let's give it up for your top three. And as you see, Super Stock Truck coming up next, lining up right behind them at that steel it starting line. Yeah, real quick to get through our lineup here. Bo Ambos is the 388. 344 is Steph Pidel. 341 is Jake Nelson. Colton Burns will be out there at the 307. Ben Alcox is in the 336. 324 is Jeff Paczynski. 305 is Tom Trellstad. 380 is Travis Trellstad. The 300 today driven by Brian Holcher. Dylan Parsons is out there in the 319. John Fitzgerald is in the 312. 351 is Billy Boone. You've also got Dan Martin, Jeff Sokovich, Tony Keepers, and Brad Kell. And we are underway here in 
Crowd 10 for 1600 buggy. Tony Keepers started on row number two yesterday and took the race win. Look at that run by Keepers up the inside again. It's Paczynski and Keepers side by side for the second straight day in a turn one. Yeah, look at Keepers. Keeper goes right to the bottom, takes that spot away, right away, and Chase. Man, his first time out in the series really put a statement down, and that's what he said he wanted to do. Yeah, Keepers trying to play a little bit of a spoiler here to the points, Chase. Points in this one. Billy Booth comes in with a 16-point lead over John Fitzgerald, and Parsons is right behind Fitzgerald in the standings. All three of those guys still mathematically in the hunt here. Keepers going through the bar turn. A lot more company. Here comes Parsons in that 319 going on the inside of Mashinsky. One of those Trellstad cars also up in the top three. Yeah, Thomas, he made his way up in that third place spot. Now trying to hunt down our top two. And already look at Fitzgerald. Yeah, Parsons is trying to catch up to Fitz because that could be the difference between second place and points and third. Fitzgerald needs to basically win and get a little bit of bad luck to strike on Billy Bowman in order to steal this championship play in the final round. Fitzgerald keepers your top two. Thomas Trellstad running in third. Check that. Parsons has gotten around Trellstad. Yeah, With Billy Booth it. running in fifth. If Billy Booth finishes seventh or better, he would lock up this championship. So he's right where he needs to be. Unbelievable for Billy Booth coming into the single buggy division, doing one heck of a job. There's Parsons. The 319. Trellstad now trying to figure out that car as the track is really drying out really, really nicely. As Parsons now, Parsons now trying to put pressure on our top two. Yeah, that's that battle for second place starting to heat up. Meanwhile, Billy Booth trying to work his way around Jake Nelson. Good battle for position there as well as they're racing for fifth and sixth. Up front, John Fitzgerald at 312. He comes from Omaha, Nebraska. Pitting under the same awning as Corey Winter. Yeah, what a good dude, though. He really knows how to run these cars. He's been around a long, long time, building different machines, and that's a, that's a Bruce Freely ride, and he's behind the wheel that, so it's really cool what him and Bruce have going on, and it's definitely working. Yeah, Fitzgerald's stretching his lead now. Keepers, Parsons, and Trellstad running fairly close for two, three, and four. Gerald, the former Pro Buggy Points champion, as well as 1600 Buggy champion, so no stranger to success in our Buggy classes, but came into today second by 16 points to Billy Booth. Yeah, Billy Booth just needs to keep maintaining his position, he can keep working his way up. As you look, Vince go right by our camera. That Argon bumper ride, still trying to put the heat on our top spot. Can't say enough about him. He's been doing a fine, fine job. Keeper's really been around quite a few years, and when he got this single buggy class, he really didn't waste any time. He started winning right away. Yeah, stepped right in in a Mark Steinhardt car, and he was off to the races right from his first weekend, competitive right from the jump here in 1600. Hopefully we can talk him into coming out and racing all year next year instead of just a limited schedule like this year. Yeah, it sounded like he wanted to because he said he wanted to make a statement this weekend. The final weekend of the year, he wanted to come out and try to lay down some good laps, put it up on top of the box, and he did in round number nine. As you look back at the 351 of Billy Booth. Yeah, he's gotten around Nelson for fourth. So Billy Booth in control of his own destiny right now as far as the points championship and 1600 buggy is concerned. He can just hang on to that spot and stay clean and cruise around the track and he will lock up this championship. There's a 305 of Trellstead in that third place spot. Two different lines going in that finish line turn in Calamity Quarter to be exact. And we've already seen it in Pro 4 receive its name a couple different times here this weekend. Yeah, had no shortage of calamity down there at all. Taking a look once again at Billy Booth. Trying to cruise and trying to double up here at points championships after locking up the light buggy championship. Working his way through Argon Loop. 
heading back towards what's our starting line here at Grand International Off-Road Raceway on the long track. Over one and a half miles long here to complete one lap. As Trellstead in that 305 still holding off Billy Booth as Booth working his way on that inside. Just trying to put every scenario in his head, probably talking to his crew, where do I have to finish? I know he wants to win, but the most important thing is that you want to carry that championship on. Yeah, if you've got a shot to win the championship entering the final couple of rounds, you've already played out all those scenarios in your head. You know exactly where you have to be. And strong run yesterday has put him in this position to be sitting in fourth, and that'll be, Claire, excuse me, fifth place. That'll be plenty if he can just hold on to that spot. Yeah, absolutely. He's doing a great job running in fifth. About nine seconds back from Fitzgerald. Keeper still in second. But Billy Booth really trying to run down. Trailstead going outside, going inside. Trailstead pushes a little wide. We'll see if Booth can close in that much closer. I'm starting to suspect that Booth isn't going to force the issue at all. He'll maybe make a move if it's a surefire pass that he's got, but he looks really content right now just to be making clean laps. There's no pressure from behind. He can run his own race, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. As we go back on board, the red, white, blue car of Johnny Fitzgerald, about a four, almost a five-second lead over Tony Keepers. And Keepers really showed a lot of speed yesterday in his win in round number nine. So it's kind of crazy to think that he can't keep the pace of Johnny Fitzgerald. So maybe he's just laying back and let the car come to him. And as his track dries out, maybe they put an all-terrain tire on it. Well, Keepers is looking at, uh, ahead to this mandatory caution, too. And knows that he's going to get another clean shot at Fitzgerald. I mean, to, to be perfectly frank, if, if you're trying to run down John Fitzgerald, you might just end up wearing yourself out more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. You might just take your time. We know that mandatory should be coming out this next time by. As Finch just finessing his way around. Carrying some good speed once again down that downside, heading into the clearest gravel pit. So many different lines you'll see. You actually see them in Pro 4, how you're trying to go up. Some guys go down, and you really want to stick to that bottom, try to protect that line. Yeah, when you come out of the gravel pit all the way down to the inside, it gives you a straighter line all the way to Calamity Corner. So that's why you see that the race line is really one line down there. Fitzgerald going to point the car in the direction of the mandatory competition. Caution that time by the red and yellow flag are being displayed. So this is what we're going to see as keepers kept a little bit from us. Parsons was third at the break here. All right, I got to pull out my point sheet here and scribble some numbers down. Vince just gained two points on Boots. Now he will trail by 14 points. So still going to take some bad luck on the hat on the behalf of Billy Booth if Fitzgerald wants to steal away this points title. Although Booth did fall down to sixth place. Excuse me, fifth place did not force the issue on Trellstad in the closing laps of that first half. No, absolutely and, not. And smartly so, because knowing that fifth place is, is plenty, even with Fitzgerald picking up those two bonus points, there's no reason to risk you know, taking yourself out of the race. No, absolutely not. You know, you just got to keep your own spot out there. You don't want to get into no carnage, no trouble, as I think this win's going to come down to Johnny Fitzgerald and Tony Keepers, but don't leave nothing out for Dylan Parsons as we're going to go down trackside with Haley Shanley. There are so many very strong wheelmen in this top spots for contention here in 1600 buggy. You know, you can't say enough about your points leader, your unofficial champion, Billy Booth, with four wins this season, one of which was, was the world championship. You know, yesterday he had some work to do. He had to work his way forward, but he was able to claim a third place finish. He may be sitting in fifth now, but like yesterday, he knows what exactly you need to do to navigate through traffic here. So watch for him. He'll be in podium contention. Thank you very much, Haley. And here we go. Richie Kuloff in the pace truck have pulled off the track one final time. We're halfway through this one in 1600 single buggy. It's John Fitzgerald. Tony Keepers and Dylan Parsons, your top three. 
Let's watch that Argon lumber car of keepers go to work on Fitzgerald as they go down towards the gravel pit. Yeah, we'll see if Keepers has anything for John Fitzgerald as they come over that little roller jump. There's Keepers going to go a little bit wider, trying to run that cushion. Nothing there. Meanwhile, Trellstead, Trellstead diving down to the inside of Parsons. They're actually hooked up, and here comes Billy Booth. There's the opportunity he was waiting for as they're still tangled up. Yeah, they're Trellstead locked together. And Parsons, they can't get unhooked. Yeah, he's over the Nerf bar on the side of that They're finally, finally able to get clear, and the other Trailstad car, Travis Trailstad, paid the price for it. Yeah, nowhere to go. He got yeah. pushed up against the K-Rail. Parsons certainly did not do that on purpose to the 380 of Thomas Trellers, excuse me, Travis Trailstad. Parsons was just almost a full lock trying to get clear of the other Trailstad car, and when he finally came down and caught some grip, he just turned into Trailstad. Oh, look at that gap already. Fitzgerald's opening up on keepers. And Billy Booth has gotten up into the top three. Parsons was tangled up there. So that just made life a whole lot easier on Billy Booth as we may now see him just settle into third place and have a good time here for these less than the next three and a half laps to the checkered play. John Fitzgerald coming back to Forest County Pottawatomie, turn number one. Tony Keepers. Still in second, trying to run the same pace. Billy Booth in third. Good run for Billy Booth and going for that points championship here in 2020, so he's doing what he needs to do. John Fitzgerald, though, stretching his lead even more over keepers. Looks like Fitzgerald's going to end this season on a high note. Keepers is going to have to find some extra speed somewhere on this race course. Billy Booth, that 351 Mud Muncher ride. Trying to work his way up through. He's just kind of just being consistent here in the second half, just hitting his marks lap after lap, three laps to go to be exact. That time by. Billy Booth trying to put his name in the history books as the first two time champion here in Champ Off Road after locking up the Mike Bucket Championship morning. Yeah, that's right. He's really going for something huge here in his career. I remember talking to him back at ERX Water Park with you in the beginning parts of the season. They were dealing with a lot of carb issues on those cars, and obviously they've got it figured out. Him and his dad are very, very smart individuals. They know how to make these cars work. So remarkable that he's on his way to having two championships in one season. Either of these classes by itself, it's they're both so competitive, and to be able to win one of those championships is an amazing feat. But for Billy Booth to have this kind of season in two buggy classes, just out of this world. Coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one, one more time. There is our race leader. Last time by was three laps to go. He'll be coming to our finish line here with two laps remaining. After he gets through this gravel pit, the track is really looking very racy. As you see, the 1600 single buck is not having too many issues with this mud now. Yeah, a ton of grip on this racetrack. We've still been doing some intermittent track work between some of these races. We did a little bit after Pro 4 just to kind of clean the track up because, as you know, those Pro 4s completely chew that track into pieces. Should be two laps to go this time, actually. Oh, actually, that's a white flag. Yeah, Looks like a white myself. flag. We're looking at our screen. It says six out of eight. So there is our white flag. Lap being displayed here. There's John Fitzgerald, the 312. About a mile and a half to go, Shane. Yeah, Fitzgerald having a great run here. It's been pretty much smooth sailing. Even on that restart, keepers had nothing for him. Like you said earlier, a statement weekend for keepers. We certainly think if he can put together a weekend like this after taking the rest of this season off, if he comes back next year full time and full commitment, he should be right up there in the front in the points chase as well. Yeah, absolutely. He knows how to win in this class. We've seen him win in round number nine, and he's going to be happy. He doesn't want to get second, but second, he's got to look at the overall. That's a good weekend for him. As you look at Billy Booth, who will be our points champion, here in the 1600 single buggy class. And look at John Fitzgerald. He's so fast, you can put him just about in anything and he'll figure it out. 
had a chance to talk to him this weekend, and we talked about Mud Muncher and how it really helps his performance because you can see the vision is huge, especially in round number nine. He just presses a button and rolls off. You don't have to take no time away from holding on to that steering wheel, which makes him really, really huge in this sport. Yeah, especially in these sportsman classes where everything is so evenly matched. Any small advantage that you can get over your competitors can make all the difference. Well, John Fitzgerald coming around Calamity Corner one final time. It's going to do it here in round 10. Going to take the big win. Yeah, strong finish to the season for Fitz. Keepers will be second, and Billy Booth will finish third and lock up a second points title here in the 2020 season. So what a phenomenal year for Billy Booth. Absolutely. From Booth on down, fourth through 10. Nelson Pytle, Trellstead, Parsons, Burns. Then you have Trellstead, another Trellstead in the field, number nine spot. Bo Ambos, top 10. As they make their way to the podium, our top three Fitzgerald keepers in Booth. Booth locking down both championships here in 2020. Huge, huge feat in itself. Him and his father, and it's gonna be a short ride back home for them. That's right, Billy Booth, our points champion in not one, but two classes. Uh, you know, the championship today, how much was that on your mind once you sunk into that third place position, or were you just continuing to go 110% as usual? No, basically my mindset from right away was, uh, you know, we only need about a seventh or better. I could see John leading, and you know, some of them guys who were trying to get by it can get it can cause a little trouble, and they did when we stuck up at the third there. And neither car ran great today. We were having we were having issues that I I don't know, just couldn't figure it out, dying in every corner. So I take what I could get and do what I needed to do. And <laughs> it's, two is two is unbelievable. There was there's so much hard work on weekends up here, back home, and. You know, we really only decided to do the second class maybe a week or two before the season, and uh, everybody thought we were crazy, and I, I, I stood up with the podium in your ex and said I thought we could win both. My mom told me, quit sounding so cocky, Billy. It's not possible, so uh, just, just couldn't do it with everybody. It helps us out. Mud Mud drives fair off, so turn machine tool. My parents, Mark Peterson, Cy and Jeremy helping out this week, Parker, uh, everybody else. Um, All-Star Performance, One-Off Graphics, all the other continued sponsors, and and champ off road and all our tracks were putting this on and you know sitting in march i couldn't believe that we'd ever have a race at all so have two seasons is uh, is just awesome so thank you thanks to everybody who made this possible well it is possible and you made it happen here is not one but two championship plaques for billy booth again that is his 1600 buggy and 1600 light buggy championship and that third place finish today for billy booth and tony keepers our second place finisher here today. You came into Korean International Off-Road, not running the full series, but even still, you are still a force to be reckoned with, one of our strongest runners out there. So how's that for a weekend? Pretty good. Uh, you know, the reason I didn't race this year, I had to have my ACL reconstructed this spring. So I sat out the year, let things heal up. And good thing this one happened late. We decided we had a fresh motor. We'll throw it in and break it in for next year and see if we still got it. And we do. So I'm. I'm pumped. I'm looking forward to battling with these guys next year. It's going to be a blast. But, uh, you know, I, again, I got to thank my wife, Lacey, and Rick, and Squints, and Benny Boy, and Jeff Jackson. You guys helped me a ton to get this car on here because it was a last minute decision. All my sponsors, uh, I didn't bug you guys this year, but I'll be hitting you up for next year. We'll get a program going again and come out and have some fun. Uh, I did, I got, do got a shout out to Victory Sign. They threw a wrap on this car for me. It turned out awesome. Last minute, he squeezed me in, so that was pretty cool. And uh, thanks to Mark Steinhardt for putting an awesome car together. And uh, we lost, uh, this summer, we lost one of my best friends. Um, he was in the military and uh, died from unknown causes. But <clears throat> we lost him this summer. It was a pretty tough year for us. So me and my spotter, Jeff, we were dedicating this one to him. So it felt pretty good to come out and hit the box. Thank you. He, he's still got it and a very meaningful podium for Tony Keepers in second. And your winner from Nebraska in a big way taking the win here, John Fitzgerald. A strong finish to the season. It looked like smooth sailing for you. Was it as easy as you made it look? Uh, we had to get a little sketchy on the start and uh, kind of go around everybody on the outside on turn one. And uh, 
got up to the front and got to the gravel pit and I seen an opening and I just made it work and uh, just never looked back from there. I mean, the car was flawless today. Uh, I mean, Bruce just gives me an awesome car to drive. I mean, I'm driving his car. It's all his stuff and it's a, it's an amazing car and got to thank him and uh, Larry and Gloria, everything they do for him, the girls that are at home, Leslie, Paige and Hay Haley and uh, all the fans coming out, uh, Winter Motorsports Group and uh, no, it was just, uh, we had a couple bad races this year and I got to give it up to Billy. He got us, but uh, we'll be back next year. We're looking forward to it. Congratulations on the big win. This is John Fitzgerald. Congratulations to our top three here on the one-off graphics 1600 single buggy. Back to you guys. Watch for it. The green flag's about to fly, and there it goes. Super stock truck going to come into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. A lot we'll of sportsman see. horsepower headed for the first corner. Kenny Wilson again with a great start. He's alongside Arneson. Let's see how it shakes out. It's going to be Kenny Wilson again. Oh, Visser gets crossed up, got into Boshaw. Yeah, Boshaw looked like he might have hit the retaining wall. No harm, no foul, but Visser kind of got a little squirrely and ran into Braden, so we'll have to see. Look at Wilson, though. Yeah, yet again, Kenny Wilson off like a rocket on this land rush start. He's got Big behind him. Big has a lot of work to do if he wants to jump from fourth to first in this points championship. Cooper is in the mix there in third. Brandon Boshaw's getting sandwiched in the gravel pit. As look at Wilson. Wilson out front, big second. Cooper in third, like you said, Shane. Man, kudos to Wilson getting those hole shots. He definitely has that gear race, so just played out perfect. Yeah, I went over to his shop on Thursday night, Brent. Those guys have been working really hard, trying to step their game up to the next level. They finally got it working here on that 803 truck. Kenny Wilson from just down the road. Technically in Crandon. Oh, Wilson goes a little sideways, giving Big an opportunity. They're side by side, Nick Big. We'll find out if Wilson has enough speed to keep up here. Wilson made a tire change overnight, so might have missed a bit on his tire group selection. Now it's going to be Big and Cooper running first and second. Wilson oh. staying way down to the inside. And Wilson got a great run off that corner. Ton of speed right now out of Kenny Wilson. Yeah, Wilson really definitely had that truck dialed in to start this race. There's Big. Big, he wants to check out on this field. Here comes Visser in the 880. Visser came in second in points. So he's got to finish a couple spots ahead of Holcher. And he has two trucks between him and Holcher. So this is looking good right now for Visser. Big needs a little more help yet than Visser does. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to see how this one shakes out. There's Nick Big. Wilson in second. Nick Visser has got a panel just sheared off that door. Yeah, he made some contact earlier on. Yeah, Brayden Boshaw and him got into it in turn number one, but Brayden had nowhere to go. Visser kind of over-rotated, so it's nobody's fault. As Big now, he's out in the lead and looks very, very smooth, Shane. Yeah, Big looks to be in control as Wilson again having some traction problems. He's able to stay in front of Nick Visser. Visser would need to gain four or five at least points over Holcher. Look at Wilson. Wilson really doing some battle with Nick Visser. As Charlie Wilson really doing a fine job. Yeah, here comes Kyle Cooper up into the mix as well. We have a three-truck battle for second place, and man, Kenny Wilson really has his hands full right now. Yeah, look at Kyle Cooper. Kyle Cooper wants a piece of this. He goes to the inside, the old Rough Riders look truck. They're going to be three wide, Brent, door to door as they come down the land rush straightaway. It's like the land rush start all over again here, and Visser is going to take over that spot. Yeah, coming back to Forest County, Pottawatomie turn number one. It's Nick Big. Nick Visser, Kyle Cooper, Wilson, your top four. They are really checked out on this field. As you see Kyle Cooper going through the barn turn, and the track is in great shape, great and nice cushion. These trucks really have limited horsepower. They're running about 450 horsepower under the hood. Yeah, very fast track right now. Two Brent is looking out front. I see a little bit of steam coming out that 833 and Nick Big. We will keep an eye on that for you as well. Oh! 
Fina Klimps in the back. Ben Holger having some issues putting it up on the bicycle, setting it back down. The green flag still out, going underneath that McCoy finish line. Your boy Kyle Cooper, we haven't said enough about him. He's been very, very quick the last couple of seasons. I've been able to watch him. Just a calm, cool, collect race car driver. He knows that mandatory cop touch caution will be coming out. Look at this. Yeah, big, Nick big. This There's could that be huge. Again. So Nick Big running hot right now, just spewing water off the top of that radiator. So he's going to need some luck on his side. Oh, it's really starting yeah, to pour out. a lot of steam and water pouring out of that Lucas oil truck to break 33. Yeah, that's coming out of the overflow on that radiator. You see that CBR radiator? Yeah, he's band. pulling it off. Yeah, there's nothing he can do. This is going to be costly to his points championship hopes. This is huge for Holger and Big, not so much. There's Visser now coming into turn number one. Yeah, Visser, your new race leader. And if he wins, he can steal this championship away from Ben Holger. We're taking a look now. Just to reset the running order, it's Visser Cooper running first and second in a great battle right now. Kenny Wilson is third, and Braden Boshaw, the rookie, is up into fourth. Yeah, Braden Boshaw, can't say enough about him. Had some bad issues to start this season, his rookie year, but the kid can drive. He actually was sitting in a couple of my sprint cars back at home, and I just want to get him better. I want him to get used to going really, really fast. Because I said you get in this super stock truck class, it's going to come to you that much easier. So kudos to him. Former super stock truck champion Scott Boshaw, that's his father. And look at this oh, goes Visser. around. Visser having all kinds of problems down there in Calamity Corner. That's going to hand it over to Kyle Cooper. I'm trying to find where Ben Holcher is in our running order. Holcher is fifth. So with Visser second and Holcher fifth, that would still be enough for Visser to steal that championship away. Boy, the numbers are just getting crumbled up here in the booth. We got to try to figure this thing out. Visser really trying to hunt back down Kyle Cooper. He's in a good spot. Look at this. A glimpse of Braden Boshaw working on Wilson. That is for the third spot. Can the rookie get the job done and put it up on the box? Still a great battle going on out front. Visser applying some pressure to Cooper as they come back on the steel and starting line straight away. Coming back to Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. It's Kyle Cooper, Nick Visser. You see him right in front of you. Just pedal to the metal, the hammer down here in Super Stock Truck. First and second pretty well checked out. It's still Kenny Wilson in third. Yeah, Wilson kind of holding up Braden Boshaw as we look back with Nick Visser. That battle for third really definitely starting to heat up. There it is. There it is, Kenny Wilson. He's got a lot of smoke coming out of that 803 Lauders Mobile Chevrolet. Yeah, Braden, he's just being patient. He don't want to do anything. He doesn't want to hurt his truck. He knows he has his second half as he's making that pass, trying to stick. Wilson oh, trying contact. to get the bedside. And Braden Boshaw sure. moves up into the top three. We've reached our mid-race caution. Kyle Cooper leads it halfway. It's going to be Visser second, so he will pick up a bonus point. That will come into play. Boy, Braden Boshaw, what a run for that rookie coming in to turn number one, about seventh, eighth spot. All right, so I can cross off Nick Big. Unfortunately, his day was done when he had that overheating problem and water spewing out the top of the radiator. So now Visser picks up one point for being second at halfway. So now it's Holcher 415, Visser 412, which means that Visser just needs to keep one truck between himself and Ben Holcher. Yeah, absolutely. So that means right now, either Kenny Wilson or Braden Boshaw could be Nick Visser's best friend. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see how this all plays out, but we're going to go down trackside with Haley Shanley. What do you have, Haley? And speaking of Kenny Wilson, you know, you've seen a battle heat up between he and Boshaw. Kenny has been an absolute whole shot rocket ship this weekend. Not only claimed that whole shot today, but yesterday as well, and a few times over Labor Day weekend. So we'll see what he does on this restart. As you could see just before this competition caution came out, so much smoke pouring out of that truck. So we'll see if he's going to be able to keep it going and babysit this thing to the finish. That's Kenny Wilson. Thank you for that, Haley. 
As you see that horsepower ranch truck there, Kenny Wilson, like I said, I was out at his shop and he was talking about uh, him and his son Charlie were talking about how much work they've been putting into these trucks and trying to get up there and run with the fast guys. And he's really shown something here. A couple of hole shots this weekend and starting to finally put it together, but still well, taking a look at our points. Visser needs to keep one truck between himself and Ben Holter if he wants to take this championship. Well, here we go. It's Cooper, Visser, Boshai, your top three. We'll see if Visser has anything for Kyle Cooper as they just take off so fast away from Braden Boshaw. Down past the skyboxes into the gravel pit. But Josek now has gotten up to fifth. Holcher is falling back. Yeah, Holcher is definitely off the pace. I don't know if something's going wrong with that 844. Here comes Wilson trying to get Braden Boshaw back. As Kyle Cooper is still leading this one, Wilson, he's putting on a smoke show. Visser looks down to the inside of Cooper and Calamity Corner, they're door to door. Cooper's gonna hold on for now, it'll be four laps to go this time. Here comes Joey Machosik now putting is, the pressure yeah, on. Machosik is really on the charge right now, he's all the way up to fourth. As we've lost touch with the 844 of Holger. Still showing all that smoke. Oh, a couple Our, cars getting crossed yeah, up there. Yeah, having some problems. Look at this battle for the lead. Kyle Cooper, Nick Visser all over one another going into Cowboy Turn. That Cowboy Corner's been very, very tough to get through with all that rain. Now that we got a good smooth track surface, we're seeing big, big speeds, especially here on a super stock truck. 80 plus miles an hour into Forest County Pottawatomie turn number one. One car link between our two leaders. It's still Cooper Visser. And it's a long way back to third. It's still Braden Boshaw, Machosik, Wilson, your top five. Kyle Cooper tiptoeing his way through the barn turn chain one more time. We are in the second half of this super stock truck race. Visser, he has body panels shredding off that machine. As you see, Kyle just running that fast line on the bottom. He carried his speed very, very nicely. A glimpse of Braden Boshaw still holding on to that third place spot. What a big run that would be for the rookie, Braden, if he can finish on the podium. Yeah, you talk about making a statement, ending the season on a high note. Oh, looks like Trouble for Wilson. Kenny Wilson, the 803. Tough break. We saw that smoke early on. It showed a ton of speed both rounds this week and had a great finish yesterday. Boy, Kenny though. For him. Kenny very, very quick out of that hole shot, pulling a couple different ones here this year. Meanwhile, Brent Ben Holcher has really fallen off the pace as well as he's running around in the back of the field and missing his right rear tire. Yeah, his championship hopes are definitely flattening out. So it's down to a two-truck race for our championship. Visser with a five-point advantage unofficially right now over Machosik. So that means Machosik has to make up a ton of ground as we are on our white flag lap here. So we're running out of time. Oh, here we go. Coming into Forest County, Pottawenny, turn number one. Looks like Visser trying to move Cooper out of the way. Yeah, really leaning on one another. Door-to-door -door contact over the first jump. Door to door over the second jump. Visser on the outside. Cooper not wanting to give an inch. No, he's using them as a verb. They're playing really, really Still. safe. Look at this. Watch the run that Cooper's going to get out of this turn. If you're Braden Boshaw, you're a rookie. You're like, come on, guys, take each other out. Yeah, Boshaw having a great run right now. Cooper's going to dive down. They make more contact. Look at Boshaw. Boshaw's right we there. We got a three truck race for the lead here. Look at Boshaw. He's got to play it smart. He's got to let these guys push out. He's got to tiptoe on that bottom. Go to the bottom, Braden. Boshaw you really got to make it work. Of Cooper. Cooper is slowing. Look at Brian Boshaw. Boshaw tucks in front of Cooper. Visser's going to take the win and the championship. Braden Boshaw second. What a run by the rookie, Braden Boshaw. He just shot at that thing. Yeah, Cooper third. Wow, what a super stock truck finish for the 2020 season. Boy, it came right down to the end. That is really, really yeah. gutsy coming into turn one like that. But Josek finishes fourth. Unofficially, I'd have him second in points. And had a little bit of a lousy start, Joe Machosik did, but 
a very strong run for him as well. And yeah, we're all excited up here for the rookie, Brayton Boshaw. Like we said, we knew it was just a matter of time before he found his way to the front, but what an incredible run. He just about snuck in there and stole that whole race away from the other two. Yeah, I, I was saying it over the thing, over the TV. He really needed just to stay to that inside. And when those guys did battle like that, it created him that little bit of a gap. And you look at our Forest County Pottawatomie brush run result. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the intensity you come to expect here for the finale here with Championship Off-Road. In third place, Kyle Cooper. <laughs> Kyle, like I said, that is the racing that is to be expected here in the final round. Take us through what happened out there from your perspective, especially that last lap. First off, you guys like that race? Was that good? <laughs> no, um... Yesterday we had a terrible uh, race, had some mechanical difficulties, so today it was just solely coming out for the win. And got an Austin awesome start, was uh, third, and then got in the lead right away. And Nick and I, Nick roughed me up a little in the back 180, so then when he spun out and I got back by him, I said, all right, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it easy on him. And uh, two laps to go, the motor changed tone and it started running pretty bad. And uh, I knew Nick was I knew Nick was by me and he put it in on me in turn one and just got me above the berm and we both jumped the berm so then I was just I didn't have the power I was rubbing on him I'm not gonna lie I was trying to hold him off last race of the year and uh, we yeah we rubbed in the gravel pit and then that thing that motor was just like no it no pull Braden got by me and he had an awesome run it's cool to see but that was an awesome race I I'm jacked about that one. I can't wait to watch the live stream replay. But uh, I got to thank the Lord. Uh, bless me with the great crew. My family wasn't here this weekend. They're watching at home. Um, Mark from Dynamic, I know he's here. Got him another podium finish. Uh, Classic Instruments, trying to get him their first win, but uh, didn't quite get there. Jeep Super Shop, Acura Transmission, Wolverine Performance, everybody else. We'll get them next year. Man, what a crazy run. Congratulations. This is Kyle Cooper, our third place finisher. And Braden Boshaw, a rookie, but a performance that was far from a rookie performance. Tell us, how much were you analyzing that battle out there for first and second? Were you able to capitalize? Oh, it was pretty crazy. I was trying to just put myself in a position where hopefully I could capitalize on them. I saw they were starting to bump and bang a lot, and I was like, well, hopefully I can get by both of them or at least one of them, and I managed to get by Kyle. So it's a uh, first time on the podium, rookie year. Uh, I'm just excited to be here. And the speed was there. Who would you like to thank for it? Nah. <laughs> I got to thank Stern Manufacturing, Deaver Suspension, uh, Dinsmore Race Engines, uh, DBR, Smith Graphics, um, Edward Jones and Bob Prince. Uh, thank you all guys for all helping me out. My mom, my dad, my brother, sister, uh, my tranny guy, Ween, uh, Smith. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. I love you. Braden Boshaw with his first podium here in the class. Congratulations in second. And donuts are for winners. They're all for this guy, Nick Visser, your winner here, pocketing an extra $1,000 courtesy of Quick Card. And I know you have your hands full. I'm going to hand you one more here as you are our class champion here in the Quick Car Super Stock Truck, Nick Visser. Wow, last lap this one came down to, not only for the win, but for the championship. Break that down for me. Oh, I don't know, right on the start, we had a good pull through turn one, and I got hit, and I was looking right at that wall, and I said, oh God, here it goes again. And I think I got hit one more time, and it's kind of straightened me out, thank God. And uh, we just get pushing from there, and the track was a lot better today. It was still tough, you know, you hit a wet rut here, and send you there this way or that way, and. It was, uh, it was tough, and then I, I thought I heard something going on my truck. I wasn't sure if it was just something flapping. Obviously, it was uh, Kyle's truck, and I was right there, and all of a sudden, he was getting slow, and I'm like, I tried that hit side, and I had to apologize for that one because I come in turn one, and it didn't stick. I slid right into him, and I used him to turn, and he was giving it back to me the rest of the way to the finish line, but uh, it was definitely a fun race. Um, I needed this. Uh, uh, I've been working so hard for this point championship. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> to come out and get it with a win and all my family here at the home track is just unbelievable. Um, <laughs> Who would you like to thank? 
Yokohama Tires, they, they, we did it. And uh, Builder Service, Parsons, uh, P Dank, Advanced Pest Management, Mac Daddy Lawn Care, GE Construction, Muskie Mart, Flannery Brothers Trucking, uh, Northern Chill Water, uh, Adams for making me a hell of a motor, uh, ATD Charlie for making me a hell of a transmission. Couldn't do it without you guys. Um, uh, Luke, my spotter, just my whole crew. They, Mike, he, he's getting a free set of tires out of this one because he drives all over and picks up all my stuff. And this, this set of tires is going to him. So besides that, I, I just can't thank everybody enough. This is amazing. It's the awesomest feeling ever. Thank you. That is what it is all about. Congratulations, Nick Vissera. Not only the Quick Car Superstock Truck Championship, but the win today. Let's hear it for our top three. Last night under the lights, we've had so many different scenarios. Now today, we see that perfect cran and track. Yeah, everything's really lined up, and you know we still have some really great sportsman racing and some pro side by side action yet to come, and we'll settle that pro light field as well. But looking ahead to that 27th annual Forest County Potawatomi Chairman's Cup, this is a great day of racing still yet to come as we're about to go green, Brent. Yeah, here we go. Face ready to throw the green. There it is. Who can get their car to turn one first? Through Forest County, Pottawatomi, turn number one. Here we go. How about it's the Speedworks teammates? Jorgensen Henches with Lemrod in third. Running two, three wide just about the rest of the way through the field. Good start by Jorgensen. He's run up front a few times this year, but had some bad luck as well. Yeah, Jorgensen doing a good, good job, and that's where you want to be. You want to be out front, want to get that clean air. Lebron in that 59, he started on the pole position. He's currently running in third. Good early showing for that Yamaha as well. But it's the two Arctic Cats running out front as we've got some yellow flags out. Yeah, something definitely had to happen in the gravel pit. Yeah, it looks like a local yellow for now. So our leaders are still full race pace. Jorgensen out front early on a clean prep track. Like I said earlier, the Cranon crew's done a phenomenal job keeping the dust down. Even after all that rain, we did see some dust earlier. Yeah, for all the uh, fighting that we had to do with the weather, we've got just about a perfect racetrack right now. One of the fastest Crandon tracks I've seen in recent memory for sure. Absolutely, as we see the battle start to heat up in our top two. Jorgensen still out front. You see them trying to help break one another. Here comes the 59 trying to work his way through the field as well. Lemoran. Oh, look, look at, at this that. battle for the lead here. I'm looking up ahead of those guys. The car that was upside down, Brent, was Bushmaker. Oh, tough, tough break for Trevor so Bushmaker. Bushmaker came in with the points lead, had the points lead despite having zero wins on the year. So he has a ton of work to do. He's going to stay on the lead lap, but 30 cars stand between him and a points championship now as we try to figure out where exactly Dylan Marquardt is in our running order. Bushmaker, not where he wants to be. That mandatory competition caution will be coming up later on, but I don't think that's going to help him much. He's going to have to have a rocket ship to get through all these tough competitors. There is the number 11 of Jorgensen. So Dylan Marquardt, the number 22, he's running in about sixth or seventh spot, so definitely way ahead of Bushmaker. And Plenty of spots between those two as it stands right now for him to steal that points championship. What a tough break for Trevor Bushmaker. We've talked to him a couple times this year. He's a, a really great competitor. Just a, a great guy to have around the sport. Yeah, That's not always, how you want to see a points championship slip away. No, absolutely not. He's always got a smile on his face. He loves to be out here in Champ Off Road. So we'll see if Trevor can pick away some different spots to try to maybe cushion his points, maybe try to make it as best as possible. I mean, he wants to win it, but right now it doesn't look very good. Meanwhile, back up front, Hentges has gotten around his teammate Jorgensen, so they've swapped positions up at the front of this pack. Tim Lebron still running in third, Lee Bergen is fourth. 
they've got some battling going on behind them. Colin Kearns involved with RJ Lego. No, check that. That's for hand, or 58. Sorry, 98. Lego. It is Lego. Yeah, Lego. We've talked a lot about him this year. He's really, really quick. He really does put together a good race car. Yeah, Ledbetter is in the mix there as well. Running up near the front. Look at that run on the inside of Lieberg and Ledbetter trying to take that spot away and catch up to RJ Lego in that 98. Ledbetter's been really putting together some good runs here in the second half of 2020. Edge is still out front. Jorgensen in second. Hillgard in third. Marquardt now in fourth. So yeah, a both good Marquardt, healthy spot. Yeah. Both Marquardt brothers up there in the top five. We saw Tyson take the win yesterday. Has Ledbetter with the power move there on RJ Lego. She's really on a charge right now. Green Ledbetter doing a fine job. Here we go. This battle for the lead. Still right there, green flag still flying. The 15 of Hedges trying to defend off the number 11 of Jorgensen. These teammates are really looking very, very fast, and their Arty Cats coming over that little roller, heading back towards the barn turn again. Yeah, really good showing right now for those Speedworks Trailo Arty Cats running first and second right from the drop of this green flag here in round number 10. Jorgensen trying to close that gap back up on Henches. More battling going on behind those two as well as Ledbetter has gotten around Lemron. So Ledbetter all the way up into third place now. What a good run for Ledbetter in that 28 as we're coming through that finish line turn. Calamity corner like we like to call it and that's the halfway point. Of this one, we are five laps in out of ten here in Sportsman side by side. Does anyone have anything for Hedges? He looked really, really quick. Tell you what stands out to me though, Brent, is Gray Ledbetter having such a great run there in that first half. I know over this offseason she was getting coached up by Johnny and CJ Greaves and kind of races alongside those two. Well, a great showing for her so far. She's only 15 years old out here mixing it up with some veterans of UTV racing right now. Yeah, great, great run by her. She's going to just keep getting better and better. As you look at our top three, top five actually on our camera, only four, about four and a half, almost five seconds back to Lego. But Lego's going to have another shot at this one in that 98. Well, Bushmaker, by the way, did manage to stay on the lead lap. He's all the way at the tail end of this field, unfortunately. And, I mean, still has a shot, but he has a lot of work to do. They are doing the Delaware restart, so it'll be side-by-side -side racing. He'll be able to pick off a few pretty quickly, I think, but every driver you pass, the next driver is that much faster, that much more difficult to pass. So we're going to go track side to Haley Shanley. Haley, go ahead. What's so amazing is how we have watched this track come together continuously throughout the day. They give us such a phenomenal course here. Uh, currently, we are at 54.177 for that fastest time in this one. That is about three whole seconds faster than our quickest car on track yesterday. So not only are these drivers not having to battle poor visibility, they're not having to contend with that extra added weight because of the mud. They're really allowed to do their thing out there, put out the speed that these machines are made to do so. We're dealing with a much faster track than yesterday. It's so exciting to see. Pay close attention this second half. Yeah, thanks, Haley. And a lot of that, of course, just Mother Nature being a little bit more cooperative. Actually, these cooler temperatures are perfect for off-road racing. The moisture can stay in the track. It stays nice and tacky, doesn't get blue groove too badly. So we're about ready to go back to green flag racing here. There, there we, we go. go. There's the green flag. We'll see. Look at Ledbetter. Ledbetter trying to make that spot stick. There she goes on the outside. There goes Gray. She will take over that second place spot and see if she can run down Hedges. Yeah, she's been on rails throughout this whole race. She goes down into the gravel pit turn. Jorgensen trying to fight back, but Ledbetter is running one heck of a race as we've got a tangle behind that group. I for sure see one of the Marquardt cars. We'll get that sorted out. Bayer was involved. That's the number two of Tyson Marquardt. So he's not factoring into the points chase. But we did see him on the podium yesterday. 
He's back out front, it's still Hentges, Ledbetter, Jorgensen, your top three. Hedges still holding on, Ledbetter trying to reel him in, running a nice line through there, the car's really hooked up. Here comes Hedges through the barn turn. Johnny just really, really quick, just steering that steering wheel in the right direction, carrying that speed, running up on that cushion, going over that little roller jump, and these speeds are so quick coming into the gravel pit. Yeah, we've still got a yellow flag situation down there. They're trying to sort out, get everything sorted out down there so we can get back to a full course green flag situation. Oh, that's the 36 of Lieberg, and he started up near the front and was mixing it up in the top 10 for quite a while there, so tough break for him as well as we've got four laps to go. Riding along with Johnny Hentges, that's Beatworks Trello Arctic Cat. But Ledbetter not letting the 15 of Hentges slip away whatsoever. Top three separating from Lego and the rest of the field. I believe Dylan Marquardt Still sitting pretty in line to take that points championship. He's running in about seventh place right now. Bushmaker all the way up to 13th, though. I mean, if he can really put together a great run, he can get back in that points conversation. Still a ton of work to do, but Bushmaker's a cool customer. Yeah, absolutely doing a great job. Here comes Ledbetter again on the outside. She's actually got a better line going around that outside. See if she can get a run coming through. Three laps to go that time by here in Sportsman side by side. Look at Ledbetter, look at her go down to that bottom. What a good run. Let's see if Gray can make this pass work. Yeah, the really, gravel pit's gonna be huge. Really good tight line through the cutoff corner by Ledbetter. Now they're going through turn two. Not a whole lot of traction up there. These cars get a little bit light. They get unweighted. You don't get quite as much grip, but look at this bumper to bumper as they head toward the gravel pit. Watch her, she's gonna try to set this thing up. Watch her try to do a crossover pass. Yeah, she's gonna try that low exit. Nice job by Hentges there, moved over to take that line away. Well, Shane, time's starting to run out here. Last time by was three laps, so two laps to go. Coming by our flag man. As I can see in the right hand of our screen, yeah, we're right, two laps to go. We'll see if Hentges can hold on. Great Ledbetter doing a really, really nice job. Yeah, fantastic run. We haven't seen her on the podium yet in Champ Off-Road. Putting it all together. It's been a day of uh, statement finishes for a lot of drivers. Ledbetter's really making a statement right now that she is going to be a force next year in Sportsman side-by-side -side if she sticks around. Yeah, she's definitely getting a lot of seat time. She's really looking comfortable, running really, really hard, not losing any time. She looks to be might be a little bit faster than our race leader. Here she goes again, outside, inside, gonna try to get that run, can't make that stick. We will be coming to the white flag, Shane, this time by. Here comes Ledbetter. She's looking to the outside. That's a long way around there. Hentges moves over, and takes that race line away. Hentges opening up that inside. Here comes Ledbetter. She Hentges. tries to force him, but nothing's there. Yeah, Hentges moves over again. Neither driver wants to make contact here and make a mistake. Boy, if you're Gray Ledbetter, you really have to try to switch up your line going to the gravel pit. She's got a good run, but you got to try to outsmart our race leader. And she's doing a phenomenal job. Here we go. Couple turns to go for Gray Ledbetter. Can she get to the Look inside? Look at this run down the inside on Hitches. Ledbetter takes over the lead as they go into the gravel pit. Boy, she gets hard on the binders. Look at that protected line. I told you she looked faster than Hedges. And she might do it. One turn to go, Shane. What a terrific run down the Skybox Hill toward the gravel pit by Gray Ledbetter. Last time into the Calamity Corner. Hentges looking to the inside. Checkered flag is out. Gray Ledbetter takes the win here in round number 10. Hentges holds on for second. Jorgensen third. Oh, big, big rollover in the back part of our street. Two cars oh, goodness. going over multiple times. I've seen a glimpse on the back side of our camera. We'll have to see if we got a replay, but man, that was horrible. Yeah, I hope those drivers that were involved in that are all right. There they are. Yeah, Mason Tesmer, Bennett. number 22 of Bennett involved as well. And 
See a lot of damage there, of course. The Champ Off-Road Safety Team, some of the best in the business, and they're going to make sure both of those drivers are A-OK -okay before we take care of any other issues here at the track. Looking at our unofficial results, Bushmaker finished 11th, so I guess hats off to Bushmaker for a really great late race charge there, but it wasn't quite enough. Dylan Marquardt, unofficially your 2020 points champ. Another fantastic race indeed. Jake Jorgensen, our third place finisher. Jake, putting together the clean, consistent laps, you were hanging up there in those top three. So what came into play for you there after that start? Um, yeah, Gray got a great run on the outside. And uh, I think we were all pretty evenly matched for the most part when one person would get by. We'd all kind of stay within a few car lengths of each other but she was flying the whole time. It was a great clean race. It was fun to race on a track like this after kind of a mud, muddy race yesterday and not being able to finish. So I'm very happy with being up here at the end of the season. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, I got to thank uh, my family. Couldn't be here this weekend, uh, but the entire Speedworks crew, uh, Johnny Henches and his family, the Laternos, uh, <clears throat> Fox, Articat, Speedworks, obviously. Uh, I'm missing a ton of people, but uh, thank you very much, everyone, for getting me up here. Hoosier Tire, obviously, these things were hooked up today, so thanks. Jake Jorgensen, our third place finisher for the Speedworks Arctic Cat. And Johnny Henches in second. Man, an intense battle you had there. You were leading for a while there, but that battle at the end, that was so much fun to watch. Tell us, how was it from your perspective? What was going on? Yeah, he had a good lead uh, coming to the competition caution, and I knew they were going to all be there at the end. And how uh, the backstretch uh, had a little messed up a little bit, and she, she drove by me like I was standing still. She did a heck of a job, both these two. Thank you very much. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I definitely got to thank uh, my family, my wife, my kids, Speedworks, uh, Henches Racing, SM Henches, um, everyone else I'm forgetting. I mean, there's t it takes so many people to put on a show, I mean, especially Cranon even. I mean, it takes so many different groups of people and teams and organizations to make any of this happen, and it's amazing that we're doing it. So hats off to everybody, thank you. Another podium run for Johnny Henches and the entire Trailo Motorsports Speedworks Articat team. And your winner coming from one of the most diverse drivers in all of championship off-road, Gray Ledbetter. Gray, a rocket ship performance for you. You were so fast. In fact, you were four tenths of a second faster than the rest of the field there. So something surely clicked for you today. What was it? I don't really know. I mean, after yesterday, we were in the mud. And honestly, I'd been asking for a mud race all year, <laughs> um, which is sort of funny. But yesterday, after the mud, we just got all the good tires today. And the track came around perfectly. And I really liked it. And I mean, the team worked all night last night to get all the mud off all the cars that we have, including CJ's. I mean, everybody. We worked all night until probably like 1 or 2 in the morning, and then all morning. So I couldn't be happier right now. Who would you like to thank for the big win? Uh, most importantly, Johnny and CJ, of course. Uh, without them, it would literally be impossible. Uh, then Kathy, and then all, basically just the whole team in general. And then Travis, Mike, Jake, all of them for working on the cars all night. And then most importantly, my dad, who isn't here, but he's probably watching. Uh, so shout out to him. And just Crandon, Champ Off-Road, everybody else that's here, made me here. She's a wheel woman, and she was flying out there today. Congratulations, Gray Ledbetter, your winner here today in Power Sports 1, Sportsman Side by Side. Let's give it up for your top three. Great action. And now we're going to go down to the little kids. The Razor 170s are coming up next. Yeah, no shortage of action there, though, as well, Brent. And, of course, we are crowning some points champions this afternoon here in the Champ Off-Road Series. Good points battle in this one as well. Ella Holcher. 419 points with a 12 point lead over Raymond Denninger. So plenty of cars and uh, things could go a lot of different ways still in this one as well. And we have a full field, 19 of these drivers are on the line. Yeah, 19 cars. Mason Schultz will start the 27 X Polaris. Livia Hedges will be in that number nine player starting the second spot. Then Camden Pidel, Ashley Bone. Harper Hughes, Cody Krantz will be in the sixth spot in that number 22 from Scandia, Minnesota. Then from Shawna, Wisconsin, Corbin Westenberg, Carson Greco, a tough, tough competitor, will start in the eighth position in that Polaris. Colin Pidel, Raymond Denninger, who Shane just talked about from De Pere, Wisconsin, will start in the 10th spot. Then Ella Holger, 
one to watch in this one from Lena, Wisconsin in the number 40. Then Draston Schimmick, whose father had a pretty dang on good weekend the last couple times here in Crandon, winning both in the mud and in the dry. So I'll tell you, watch for Jackson to follow in those footsteps. Grant Dressel in the 13th spot. Harper Probes from Avon, Ohio will start in the 14th position. Then it's Madison Whittafor in the 15th spot. And Finley Holger from De Beer, Wisconsin, 17 through 19. Abigail Bone, Lily Zeiler, and Kate Zimmers, or Zip Demars, in the 42 from De Beer, Wisconsin. So rounding out 19 cars, and it's crazy. This field always keeps building week in and week out as we were waiting for that green flag. There's Faye gonna raise that yellow flag one time, set it down, wait for the green flag. Here it is, we're underway. Razor 170s coming into Forest County, Pottawatomi turn number one already. Looks like Greco with that big hole shot. Yeah, look at that jump by Greco. Mason Schultz had the inside lane on that start. He looks to be up near the front as well early on. And it is Greco, Schultz, Wassenberg, Denninger looking for Ella Holcher. We got a couple cars already upside down in turn one. Looks like 52 of Winnistorfer, who was on the podium yesterday, along with Harper Prost. It's a tough break for those two drivers out of the running early on here. So we'll reset the field for you once again. Wassenberg is up into second behind Greco. Schultz still running in third in that Matco Tools car, number 27X. Look at Wassenberg trying to put an inside move here on Greco. Well, look at Wassenberg, you're right, going to that inside. Greco opened up the door. We'll see if Greco can get back down to the bottom. The track really, really in great shape. These cars are really going a lot faster than they did in round number nine. Wassenberg will lead the field for the first time up and over the Polaris flyaway jump. Denninger trying to steal a points championship away. He trails Ella Holcher by 12 coming into this one. He's running in third. Oh, look at the breaking bumps right there going into the finish line turn. Yeah, a huge hole down there. Now these drivers have seen it though and they know it's there, so hopefully they'll be able to steer clear of it next time through there. Greco, that 155, really doing a good job. He got out that early hole shot. Balls back to second. Here we go. Battle for third. More contact. Yeah, that was Dressel and Schultz that got involved. Denninger gets collected. So does Cody Krantz. That's going to let Wassenberg and Greco slip away here. Our lead pack trimmed down to just two cars. There's the number 25, the 155, well out front. Like I said, the track really starting to look nicely on those high sections going over those roller jumps, carrying so much speed going into the gravel pit. For a Razor 170, you look forward to going on those downsides to try to get a little bit more speed out of these cars. Yeah, plenty of speed right now in that number 25 Polaris of Wassenberg. He's from Shawano, Wisconsin. Showing the way around here, he's about 10 car lengths ahead of the 155 of Greco now. Looks like Dressel up into third. Denninger fourth, and then Ella Holcher up into the top five. Yeah, Ella Holcher doing what she needs to do now in the top five, we'll see. As long as she can stay within at least about five spots of, or excuse me, three spots there of Denninger, that'll be plenty for her to win this championship and bring it home back to the Holcher pit. Yeah, absolutely, can't say enough about the Holcher family, they're everywhere Yeah, look at that sport. battle. Holger versus Peitel right there, battle of the two cousins. We've seen Colin Peitel up on the podium a couple times this year as well. So Holger right behind Denninger, and that would be plenty for her to clinch this championship at the end of this round 10 finale. Clicking off some more laps here in Crandon, Wisconsin. There is the 55, the 155 of Carson Greco. Wassenberg still out in front. Have to see how this one pans out. Always great competition. Yeah, look There's at this Ella Holger. Dressel and Denninger got into one another a little bit. Ella Holger was right there. She's got to be careful because you don't want to get involved in 
other people's chaos and take herself out of this points chase. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anything scares her. She's just going to wait her turn, try to maybe split the defense there and go around them. She's going to be on the inside on the exit. Nothing there. So no change in the running order. Dressel did a nice job of gathering that car back up. He was way out of control there for a moment. So they'll head back down into Calamity Corner to complete another lap here as we've got a yellow flag down there. Oh, we got a worker pointing them around that hole, so. Yeah, there was definitely a lot yeah. of big holes we watched in the beginning parts of this race, Shane. They were just getting upset. They don't want to see anyone get hurt. Because when these cars go over, they go for one heck of a ride. Yeah, it looks like Colin Peitel has gotten back around Ella Holcher. So Wassenberg, Greco, Dressel, Denninger, your top four. Battle for third, starting to heat up. It's Dressel running third, Denninger fourth. Hopefully Colin Peitel there running in fifth will play nice with his cousin Ella Holcher. And no, you don't want to see a mistake between teammates, especially. I mean, obviously, all these drivers racing for position on the racetrack as well as points. It's all Wassenberg out front, though. He's been dominant here in the early going. Yeah, Wassenberg's really checked out on the field, trying to just lay down the fastest lap possible. You see the wind still blowing here in Crandon, Wisconsin. The track looks in beautiful shape getting a lot more speed out of these slower divisions here in Champ Off Road with two laps to go that time by Shane. Yeah, this one's over halfway done. Greco, he's been fast all year long, comes out from Arizona to race with us here at the Champ Off Road Series. Showing a lot of speed, but has nothing right now for Wassenberg. And then behind them, look at that, it's Denninger Dressel now is up in the mix. So Denninger trying to do it to uh, help himself out a little bit here. Try to cut into that points lead that Ella Holcher has. As you look once again at Wassenberg and that Dan Nolan livestock machine. Big, big lead over Greco. Wassenberg still out front in that number 25. Like you said, Greco in second, Denninger in third, Dressel in fourth. There's Ella Holger in fifth, so here she comes, gonna try to make another pass. Yeah, Holger going to the outside of Dressel. It's hard to keep that momentum up. You hear those cars are just totally going as fast as they possibly can, and Dressel again gets caught up in the rough stuff. That's gonna scrub just enough speed, so Holger again on the back bumper of Denninger. Those two are your battle for the points championship, but Ella has a 12-point lead, so as long as she can stay in the same neighborhood as Denninger, she will be your champion. Yeah, here comes Peitel now to the inside in that 44. About four and a half seconds back, you see our track crew still pointing them away, their way around those big holes on the inside. White flag out this time by for Wassenberg. Greco still second, Denninger now third. Yeah, Wassenberg at this point, he's just out on a Sunday cruise all by himself, making some laps here. He's done everything flawlessly so far. No mistakes out of that number 25 car. To ride along, you know, from a distance, they don't look like they're going that fast, but when you're riding right alongside one, you can tell that these cars do make quite a bit of speed, especially as they come down this long hill toward the gravel pit. Yeah, they really do. They pick up some good speed coming into the gravel pit. Like you said, you really just have it flat out. You said earlier how they sound like they're just all out. They're hitting the rev limiters on these little cars. You'll see a lot of these drivers keep making their way up through the championship off-road racing series. And I'll tell you, what Wassenberg is doing is huge because he's putting a lot of confidence underneath that helmet for 2021. That's gonna make this final right-hander and should be able to claim the final victory of 2020 here in Champ Off Road, round number 10, this is it. Checkered flag is out, Corbin Wassenberg takes the win in round number 10.
second place coming to the line. It'll be Carson Greco from Arizona and Ella Holcher got around Denninger. Holcher will finish third on the podium and she is your 2020 race driven side by side 170 points champion. There is Ella Holger in the number 40 HBI ride. Congratulations to that team. And here's our Forest County Potawatomi brush run. Razor 170 results. One new points champion. And I got word that we are making some history here today. Ella Holger, our third place finisher. Actually the first woman to win a points championship here in the Midwest. So here's some more hardware for you. She is our 170 side by side class champion in 2020. Man, Ella making history. What is your reaction to that? This is a big one. Um, it's great. Um, I feel excited and like to be the first girl to win the championship is like awesome. How much fun was this one for you today? Um, it was fun. It was hard. Um, me and um, Raymond were battling a little bit, so it was kind of hard. Who would you like to thank? Um, my mom and dad, my dad, because he works um, endless hours at the shop to work on it. Um, my grandma and grandpa, um, my Uncle Scotty, my Aunt Steph and Uncle Craig, and um, all my sponsors. And, and um, God for keeping me safe and getting me up here today. Such a strong family effort. Congratulations on the championship and the podium, Ella Holter. Girl power. And Carson Greco, our Arizona runner. Carson, you had some work to do. You had to work your way up for this one, but you were so fast. Tell me, how was it working your way through the field? When he passed me, I got a little scared because I thought Ella was going to pass me as well. Well, you looked fearless with the speed that you did have. Who would you like to thank? I want to thank my mom, my dad, my brother, Jake, Eric. 2X Motorsports and Reliable Air Conditioning. Congratulations, Carson Greco on a phenomenal season and our second place finisher today. And your winner taking home that big trophy cup and that gold medal, Corbin Wassenberg. <laughs> Corbin, you held on for the win. This is a tough competitive field. How did you do it today? I started on trying to get a good start and then on the way down the little corner over there, I, I dropped back a few places, I got back up a few places and then Coming around down here by the Champ Off Road sign. And I got a few people still. And then coming around the barn turn and coming off of it, I got Carson. And then I got up to first. Kind of excited, trying to get my hopes up. Well, it was a great race. Who would you like to thank? My mom and dad, my all my sponsors, and everybody who came out here to watch me race. Congratulations. This is Corbin Wassenberg, a big winner today here in the Race Driven Side-by-Side -side 170s. Let's hear it for your top three. 11 cars on our starting line. You see a bunch of the pit crew members trying to buckle their guys in, make sure everything's working, have their pumpers on their helmets, and we are about ready to get underway. As you see a lot of track prep being done throughout the day. Kudos to all the track crew here at Crandon doing everything under their power to give us a great facility here this weekend. And I'll tell you, Last night was crazy, went underneath the lights, it was raining, had a chance to talk to Todd LaDuke, and he said, 
it wasn't so bad, but when they, that rain got on your visor and got on that film, it created the glare, the raindrops, everything about it was just really, really tough. Wherever the ruts were and the bad spots were on the track, it really just put a shadow over. So it was a lot of guessing under the lights. Yeah, drivers, like I said at the end of our show yesterday, Brent, it was a lot of it was just battling the weather and battling the track itself. And it did create some good battles out there on the racetrack, but you said it, the track crew was up as early as 6 a.m., you know, just about sunrise up here in northern Wisconsin. And they were out there doing the work, putting in the hours, and that's all volunteer labor and donated equipment. So tip of the hat to everybody involved in both donating that equipment and out here running those machines, turning this dirt over because this track is immaculate right now. Yeah, absolutely. It was a mess last night, and it was really, really scary to see what we had to bring towards round number 10. But, hey, it is a great track. These pro buggies are going to get up and haul around this 1.7-mile facility as they're looking on the inside of J.D. Coran, just making sure everything is okay, and he's starting on that pole. And that's the preferred line. I've started on that inside multiple times when you pull a whole shot there's no better feeling yeah it seems like with the track conditions today especially that that inside line we've seen a lot of hole shots coming from that that area the first one or two or three spots there along that blue wall saw kenny wilson and super stock truck use that to his advantage to lead the field down into turn one as well Looks like most of our track maintenance equipment is being pulled off to the side, so we're just about ready to get going here. We've even seen some really good starts coming from the second row if they're all the way over to that uh, left-hand side or the driver's right-hand side on our steel at starting line. So yeah, you're just can, about getting ready to go here now. Yeah, you can definitely you can try to follow those guys on the inside of row number one all the way to turn one is definitely the shortest way around. It looks like we're getting these cars fired up. Shane, the pro buggies. There's Hester, Steinhardt, Schwabi. It was cool to see Scott Schwabi right alongside of Ryan, getting them all ready to go. If you don't know who Ryan Schwabi and Scott Schwabi are, you haven't really paid attention in this sport because Scott's been around a long, long time. So Hester can wrap up the championship. Uh, the bonus points for halfway notwithstanding, he can finish sixth or better and wrap up this championship here today. And something else we got to think about, Hester yesterday picked up his first ever win at Crandon, but it was career win number 99. So there's a chance he could have a really storybook ending to this 2020 season, pick up win number 100 and a points championship at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. It was cool to hear him say on the podium, you know, I haven't had the greatest luck at Crandon. I've been his third a bunch of times. Just can't get that top spot. So kudos to him and his team. Yeah, you, you can tell by up the, on uh, top. You can tell by the emotion that he showed up on the podium that, uh, you know, a, a big sense of relief to finally you know, put the bad luck here at Crandon behind him. We'll see if he can parlay that into another strong run here in round number 10. Yeah, what a way to end the season, though, if you're Hester. If you can pull off win number 100 in your career, look at who's done that as well. Kyle Aduke, he's well over 100 wins now as Faye is up in the tower again. There's that red board. Watch as he slides it across. It goes the yellow one in five seconds. There he goes. He went within two seconds. We'll see if he gets the Forest County Potawatomi first. In turn number one, it looks like J.D. Coran with a whole shot. Yeah, Hester went way wide to try to dodge that puddle. Steinhardt running up the outside. He looks to be in the top three as they come from turn one. It's Coran, Kirkham, Stein, Schwalbe, and Hester up into fifth. So Hester already in position. If he could just hold on to that spot, he would be your champion. Here's Hester trying to make his way up to the front. There's Steinhardt, such a close shot. part of that program. Absolutely, like I said yesterday, he had a, a, a horrendous crash at ERX a few weeks or a few months ago. Bent the car all kinds of different ways. He was really discouraged and thought about just stepping away from the racing for a while. Matt Gerald, unfortunately, was able to talk to the city and now they put the work and got the car back together. This is the year round number 10. You see that a lot, though, Shane. You, 
you have one bad crash and you look at the budget, you look at your finances, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can afford to do it. But if there's any info you can give any kind of race car driver, it's like, stick with it. You might have your bad days, but the good days make up for all the bad ones. Here goes Kirkham now to the inside of Grand. They're going to go side by side. Kirkham with a great run out of Cowboy Corner, and Mike Kirkham is going to take over this race lead. Kirkham coming into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. J.D. Coran still second, Steinhardt third, here comes Hester. Hester all over the back row for a Steinhardt. That's your battle for third, but up front, it's now Coran trying to keep pace with Kirkham. J.D. Coran, you can hear him running on the top of the ship. Off that red limiter, there's Coran going to the inside on Kirkham. Coran wants that spot back, kind of over rotates. here at Grand and testing that car, trying to find a little bit extra speed as Kirkham goes by. They did a lot of work down there in Calamity Corner to get rid of those holes. Looks like they're still trying to sort out uh, where it is the race line. Steinhardt basically needs to win and then get a little bit of help in the form of bad luck for Mike Hester if he wants to win this championship. Look at the battle we have going on all the way from third on back. Just everyone trying to swap positions. J.D. Grant losing another one to Steinhardt in that number 31. And Hester just playing it really, really safe. As the track really starting to widen out now. Yeah, really an ideal track for this. You know, high revving two wheel drive super buggies. And Grant, he's trying to get back to the inside of Steinhardt. Not going to happen down there in the Polaris gravel pit. Meanwhile, Mike Kirkham is just loving all this because he's out front running all by himself. He's yeah, he really is. He's nowhere to be found on our camera. Here comes J.D. Coran, once again, trying to work on Mark Steinhardt. We are a couple laps into this one already. Going through Argonne turn there is Steinhardt, J.D. Coran, Mike Hester. Like we said, 99 career wins if you were tuned in earlier to start this race. It'd be cool to see him get win number 100, but Kirkham, he's got something else to say about that. Hester has higher aspirations. He knows if he stays where he is, stays in the lead. It's round to finish this race and be the points champion. I know Mike, I know that he's fully aware of that coming into this round 10 race. We're not going to see a ton of aggressive driving out of Hester in seven. No, absolutely not. He just wants to secure that point championship. But hey, speaking about being aggressive, he's starting to look on the inside of J.D. Coran coming in Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. Still Steinhardt now in front of that group of cars. Vandenhausen looks to like be buttoning up the back as well as Schwabi. Yeah, a great pack of racers going past the skybox on the down toward the traffic. Top two in points, 
battling for third place on the race course. Let's see if Hester can make it stick. He does. Boy, Steinhardt, he's kind of falling off the pace a little bit. I don't know if something's going wrong with his car. Not trying to make any kind of excuses, but you never really see Mark Steinhardt lose that many spots that quick. Yeah, he looks to be just a half step slower right now than Mike Hester. mid-pack run for him. We've seen him on the podium a couple times this year, too. Landon Elson was six at the halfway. Good clean racing there in that first half. And I mean, this is open wheel racing at some incredibly high speed, so there's got to be an element of trust between all these drivers that, you know, like Mike Hester knows, if he puts that inside move on Steinhardt, that Steinhardt's not suddenly going to swap over and, and take them both out. No, absolutely, and they're, they're good sportsmen, and they, they really don't want to take each other out, so you'll see this come right down to the end, but kudos to J.D. Coran. He's still in this one. Kirkham looks to be a little bit faster. He had about a two-and-a-half-second lead chain, so we'll have to see if those guys can run his pace. Yeah, and what I was saying about, you know, staying perfectly clean, that's in contrast to, like, what we saw in Super Stock Truck, where... You saw Cooper and Visser just leaning on each other door to door for about two thirds of a lap there. You know, in Super Buggy, the, it's the complete other end of the spectrum. You have to run extremely clean. You have to avoid contact at all costs and just outsmart and outdrive the other competitors. Yeah, absolutely. You watch as Kyle Cooper and Nick Visser came into Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one. They were hitting fender to fender with open wheels. You do that, well, we're going to see somebody go over the retaining wall. So. They definitely are playing smart here on this restart, and I don't know if Kirkham can pull away. Oh, tough break for the 30, Brandon Johnson. Coming all the way from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and driving a beam car, so you hate to see that. Got that uh, torsion beam suspension on that car. Harkening back to uh, classic days of super buggy racing before the A-arm cars took over. Back when we were young, Shane. Some would call them the good old days. <laughs> Well, here we go. The restart flag is about to fly. Watch it between those two orange cones. Kirkham can take off at any time. Kirkham with a nice jump, but Coran really didn't lose a lot. We'll see if JD Coran can do anything. trying to make this pass stick. Look at that little drive. They Whoa. make contact. That's what we were talking about. You do not want to make contact with these open wheel cars. No, Hester, he's doing a good job. 99 career victories. Like we said, he's going for 100. The laps are winding down. You see on the right side of your screen, four laps to go on the flag tower. Yeah, and meanwhile, Kirkham and Coran are each chasing their first win in Super Buggy. Wow. So you've got zero wins in first, zero wins in second, 99 wins in third. Rhinelander, Wisconsin is Mark Steinhardt's hometown. Here's another run by Hester as they head towards Cowboy Corner. He's got the inside line on Coran and moves over and makes that pass stick. Man, he really wants to get that 100th career win. We'll see if he can chase down Kirkham. Remember, Kirkham's still looking for that first win here in 2020. And that 56 is going to come back to Forest County, Pottawatomie, turn number one once again. It is Kirkham. Coran running in third, Hester now in the second, so we'll see if Hester has anything as he's running a little bit of a line off of our race leader. Watch as he's grabbing going into that cushion, rolling off. They're going to be side by side heading into the gravel pit. Yeah, Hester had a great run on the skybox hill. Now this is the fall back line and follow Kirkham around the cushion. 
push it. Oh, a little mistake by Kirkham. That little mistake can turn into a big one right here. Yeah. Look at Hester. He's trying to be Whoa. over the back. Bumper to bumper contact nearly as they landed over the Polaris flyaway jump. Kirkham gets out of that race line. Two laps to go that time by. Can Hester click off win number 100 in his career? Two laps to go. Hester starts to dial up the pressure on Kirkham. starting to pay off for Hester as he stubs it a little bit. Maybe missed the shift, got in there a little too hard. Remember, they actually have handbrakes in these cars to help them rotate, and sometimes it can really stub your momentum. We'll see if Hester can make up that ground he lost with his mistake. And even Cowboy Corner really looking a lot more raceable than it did earlier on today. Got about two full race lines. We've seen a lot of action there all weekend, actually. Hester trying to chase down Kirkham. Remember, only a couple laps remaining. These are our leaders right on your camera. Kirkham Hester still doing battle. Watch as Hester, he gets a good run out of here every time. Watch him grab that cushion. He crosses right over. Yeah, he moves way down, jumps, jumps off that little fly. He jumped right next to that big white tractor tire. He knows time's running out. Kirkham's just been that, that fast in that JRJ ride. They'll come down into Calamity Corner again. We're trying to settle the debate which bike is the faster super buggy driver here on Sunday. It's Kirkham versus Hester. One and three quarter miles of racetrack left between them and the checkered flag. Hester trying to get the win. Kirkham trying to get the rear win. Hester driving it down to the bottom. There's nothing there. Kirkham going on the race line. They make a little contact. And man, just like the last lap. Again, Hester, at that time he just backed off to try to stay clean. I'm, I'm certain of that. You, yeah, you don't want to shear a right front or a left front tire off this late in the race. Points are huge here. Yeah, the, the 100th win will come to Hester eventually, but he is in control of this points championship right now as well. Coran still sitting in third. Schwalbe has gotten up into fourth. Yeah, good run by J.D. Coran. They're coming back forward through Forest County. Pottawatomie turn one, one final time. This is going to be it for 2020 in Pro Buggy. Hester just bonsai off the barn jump. Trying to keep it to the bottom now on exit. I don't know if there's going to be enough time, though. Shady just got all crossed up yeah, again. Yeah, Hester starting to overdrive just a little bit. I think now he's going to take a deep breath, settle in. You know, the, the reality is he's about to win this points championship. He's just got to stay clean at this point. One quarter to go, though, for Mike Kirkham. running that one. There's the checkered flag. Mike Kirkham takes the win in round 10. Hester across the line second, and he will clinch the points championship. And J.D. Coran holds on for third. Fourth on back to 11. Schwabi, Steinhardt, Vandenels, and Flannery up to seventh. And that 44X, then it's Schwartzberg in third. So good run by Schwartzberg. Yeah, for Schwartzberg, he managed to stay out there and uh, Makes some clean laps as well. Like we said, he's been racing here at Crandon all 51 years. Great ambassador of the sport. And Kirkham's got to be excited. He's been working really hard this year. He's put together some good runs, but could never quite find his way all the way to the front. Absolutely. It was not his day. The Forest County Pottawatomie brush run. Emotions running high, just like I'm sure they were on track, because you could really throw a blanket over your top three for a majority of that one. <laughs> Starting out, we're going to grab a word with J.D. Coran, our third place finisher. J.D., come on down to the mic, J.D. Man, tight racing, all good, clean racing. It's been so fun to watch. Walk me through that performance. Well, we just wanted to get a good finish today after yesterday. I blew it, uh, had a whole shot and blew it after the helmet fogged up. So today was just uh, some redemption for my team. So uh, the track was excellent. I had some great racing with uh, the two mics and uh, it was just, just a lot of fun. It's good to be here.
who would you like to thank? All right, uh, after a very long season, first and foremost, Matt Gerald, Matt Gerald Racing. Thank you, Matt. He's built this car from the death now to live it again. Thank you. We have Mikey Van Den Heuvel at Flying Dutchman Racing. Instrumental in suspension and all the fabrication you had to do. And uh, we have Curtis, and we have Travis, and we have Ben and Luke, and we have Chad Rayford. And uh, uh, main sponsors, obviously, Matt Gerald Racing. We have Amsoil, we have Shock Tech, Funko Motorsports, uh, Bob's Motors and Trannies. Thank you, Bob, for a good mo uh, power plant. And um, uh, FK Rod Ends. I was getting there. Hold on. Right away, you got to get the wife first. Come on. And my wife, Jill, who puts up with all this stuff. And my wonderful kids, Kayla, Ethan, and Chase. Thank you for supporting me and making this a family event. It really is a lot of fun with the family. Thank you. Finding some redemption in the grand finale. This is J.D. Coran, our third place finisher. And a decorated career, no doubt. He's taking home another nope, championship. That's not me. Oh, this is points? Okay. You are points Thanks. champion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike Hester. Another phenomenal Thanks. race, and you clinched the championship. How about that? That's incredible. This is the first time we've ever won the points championship up here, so it's super special to do that. And also, you know, we got a first, a second, and a third here now, so I think the curse is officially lifted. We're now able to place up here so we're looking forward to it unfortunately we didn't get our hundredth win so i guess that means we got to come back next year so so we have that to look forward to but i got to thank my family for coming out and supporting me always with this it's so much fun racing with mike out there today that was just that was a ball we i i did everything i possibly could to get by him and couldn't do it he he held in there the whole time it was a lot of fun uh i gotta thank i gotta thank besh i gotta thank sloan's automotive uh Precision Automotive out of Macon, uh, JL Golding Waterproofing, Terry Sloan, Dwayne, Gary, Jeff, everybody, the family, thank you so much for all the help and all the support. Mike Hester, congratulations. A strong, hard-earned second place finish and that 2020 Pro Buggy Championship. And Mike Kirkham, your winner here today, taking gold. Mike, you've been so close, but the monkey is off the back now. Your first win in this class. How does it feel? Uh, it feels great. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work to get here. Um, but it was nice to finally uh, suck some of that clean air today and run a nice clean race. Who would you like to thank for the win? I'd like to thank, first off, uh, Yokohama Tire. They uh, hooked us up this weekend. And uh, wow, amazing. You guys make a good tire. Um, Alumacraft race cars. Uh, Wix Racing Engines, USW, you got that right, Sister Christian, Porter's Patch, uh, my wife, uh, Trent Johnson, Zach Barron, my mom and dad, uh, Steve Down and his family. Thanks a lot for coming out, guys. Let's hear it from Mike Kirkham. This is your pro buggy division, and he's your big winner here today. Back to you guys.